good morning. We've made it to Friday. Lovely to have you here with us here this morning at Sewing Quarter. My name's Amy Burrows and I'm with you for the next four hours. So I'm joined by the lovely Amanda Wyatt this morning. We've got some fantastic projects lined up to show you, including this blouse, which I'm wearing today. So we're doing that at 10 o'clock. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. So I'll talk you through what's coming up on today's show. So you've got a bit of an idea. At eight o'clock, let's look at the menu. So Friday's showcase, we've got the Visaline showcase at eight o'clock this morning. So we're talking through lots of different products that can um, sort of add some, add some new techniques perhaps to your sewing. At nine o'clock, we have got stash building bundles. We've got some premier fabrics, some launches in that hour. Then at 10 o'clock, Oh, we've skipped to 11. We've got it in a funny order there. At 10 o'clock, we've got the dressmaking hour. So making this blouse that I'm wearing this morning with Amanda. And at 11 o'clock is Taylor's tool time. So loads of different tools um, for pressing, for tracing, for marking your fabrics. Um, lots of different things to show you for your workroom. So we are actually going in order. We will be going 8, 9, 10, 11, not 8, 9, 11, 10. Um, but yeah, so this morning in this hour, we're looking at Visaline, lots of different, um, different products that perhaps you might not have seen before. We've not had some of these on the show. And they're going to introduce some different techniques that perhaps you can introduce to your projects. Now, also remember, we love to hear from you. So this morning, I'm wearing a blouse made by Amanda. Maybe you can send in some pictures of, of clothes that you've made if you've perhaps made something for a special occasion or just for, for general wear. Um, send us a picture, studio at sewingquarter.com. We can show them on the show this morning. Or you can send them in on social media or you can head to the website. We'll show you how to do that. So if you go to uh, the Sewing Quarter website and if you go to the watch page, if you just click on that icon at the top of the page and on the menu, you'll see underneath the live feed of today's show, there is a message the studio box. So there I am just under there. There it is. Oh, it's on the right hand side. It's moved over. It's jumped. So you can just send us a message in there. Say hello if you've got any questions for Amanda, perhaps about any of the, project, uh, the products this morning. Um, just let us know. And also make sure you send us those pictures. We love to see them. Now, underneath that, you'll see there's a shopping list of all the products from today's show. So as we go through this morning, those are from yesterday. But as we go through today's products, they'll all be added there and you can add them to your basket like one big shopping list. So nice and simple and straightforward. So let's have a look at what we're starting with this morning. We've got some solids bundles, which we know you love to add to your stash. Um, great for binding, great for backing, great to just have some sort of rich uniform color fabrics that you can team with some of those designer prints as well. So let's look first of all at the blue. So we're going to go for this sort of, maybe an underwater sort of theme. We've got five different blues in this bundle and you get half a meter of each of these. So you're getting two and a half meters in total. So you can see that sort of rainbow of blues there. We start with this really sort of soft uh, baby blue under there at the bottom. Then we've got a cornflower blue, just a nice uniform color. Then we've got a slightly darker blue there. We've got azure blue and a navy. So five different blues in that spectrum which would work perfectly as well with some of the, oh, it goes well with my top. It's great to team with some, um, with some designer fabrics as well. Perhaps if you've got a more busy print and you want to tone it down, then you've got that as an option. Now, the other solids bundle that we've got, let's, oh, I'm going to do a dance with solid bundles. Um, it, this is more of a sort of a, a natural sort of theme. So um, maybe like a forest, foresty sort of colours, but you've also got some, some creams and browns coming through in that. So you've got cream at the bottom, just a classic cream there. You've got your cappuccino here. You've got mocha, you've got ochre, which is this one, which is a really lovely, um, I don't know if you can see there's sort of a golden green. And then on the top here, you've got chocolate. Oh, we're getting hungry already and it's only eight o'clock. So again, you've got two and a half meters in total there, half a meter of all of those. CPGC67 is your item number for that one. So as we said, this morning's show at eight o'clock, this is all about Visaline um, or Visaline as, as we know it's also called. So you've, we've got lots of different um, new products that you might not have seen before. We're going to show you some techniques of how to use those with Amanda. So I'm going to start with this one, which is not a yoga mat as our director thought it was this morning. So let me just show you this here. So you're getting a meter of this. So you get, I'll show you this here. You get loads of that. And this is a foam. So this is a sew-in, um, it's like a, it's a lightweight foamed fabric you're getting, which you get a meter a pre, in a pre-pack of this one. And we're going to show you how to use this, but we're just gonna quickly show you these different products to start with so you know what's coming up. So this one's 9.95, it's really soft, really lovely way to add some structure to bags or to toiletry bags, makeup bags, things like that. 
So that's the first one. Let's roll our, roll our mat back up. We're not doing any sit-ups this morning. Let's just move that over to the side. And then the next one we've got, let's look at this. So this is your, um, your bonder web. So lots of people using these to take up hems. I know my mum uses this because she's, she's not particularly great with a sewing machine. It's, some people say it's the cheat's way out. Um, so this is your uh, bumper pack of Wonder Web, again from Visaline, 445. So we'll show you how to use that one. Then next up, we've got this, which I'd never seen before. This is an iron cleaner. So it's great for getting, if you've got any sort of um, residue on the bottom of your cleaner, perhaps you've got burns that are transferring to your fabrics. You can use this cleaner to remove those. You just heat it up and pop that on. So this is a, an iron cleaner stick, 2.95. Then we've also got, let's do this one next. So how much have we got here? Is it a meter again, I think? I think this is a meter. This isn't the, this. This is the fleece here. Is it? Th no, this is the. Um, this one here is what you can use. You can dissolve it, so you can use it for embroidery. You can use it um, for lots of different techniques that we'll show you with Amanda in a second. But this, with water, this will come away. So you could use that for um, for machine embroidery, but also to um, to add to. Where's the graphic for that one? I don't know if we've got the item number. Yeah. No, it's not the. I don't think this is the fleece. This is the fleece embroidery. Yes, this is the, okay. So we all got a bit confused there. This is the Solu Fleece Embroidery Backer. So this does come away with water. It does dissolve. 3 95 for that one. And then our last one, we've got two more things, two more things. And um, so this one here is, um, this is great. You can use this for um, perhaps the facing on the top of the, we're going to be using it on the, on the blouse actually that Amanda's going to do on the shoulders and on the neckline. And um, so it's a great way if you don't want to, um, if you don't stitch over the top of those, um, facings and hems, you can use that there. So that's the bias tape in black. And then the last one we've got, we're moving them all over to the side. Let's open this one here. Again, it's a metre, I believe. Let's double check that. Yeah, this is a metre. So um, this is a uh, bonder web again, but this is in a big sheet. So if you want to use it, um, for some, we'll see that now being used. If you need it in a larger amount rather than in a tape, then this is a metre of that in beige, 9.95. Lovely. So that's one of our Visaline products. Let's go over and meet Amanda so you can see how they actually work in action, which is probably more interesting than me just showing you the, them. So let's see. Hello. Good, good morning, morning, Amanda. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Really good. Thank you. Good. Bright and early, ready to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a whole menagerie of Visaline this morning. We have, yeah. We've got lots and lots of different sort of techniques that um, sort of set up. I was like, sent a big goodie bag and it was like, right, let's what see what I we can with do with them. Yeah, so hopefully be able to sort of show a couple of extra techniques um, and how to use some of these products Absolutely. as we go. So the first one up is the, the bias tape, okay. as you say. So it's a fusible bias tape. It's 12 millimetres wide. And it's actually got, on the one side, you can sort of feel that it's quite rough. And that's the side that's fusible. Okay. Okay, and then it's soft on this side. It's actually already got, um, it's split into four millimetres and eight millimetres by a row of stitching. Okay. Can I just show that? Yeah. I don't know if you can I just see, see it there. But you can just see those stitches going across that, sort of diagonally, aren't they? And then you can see that split between the four millimetres at the top there and the eight at the bottom. Okay. okay, so this is really good. It's great on cottons, it's great on jerseys as well. Um, so round necklines, round arm sort of facings as well. And you can actually use it when you were working with jersey. Because our shoulders are our coat hanger and they hang yeah. on it, you always need to put a little bit of stay tape on the back part of your garment. So a strip of this fused onto it will work absolutely wonders and it'll just stop the whole garment from dragging out. So, so when you use this for facings or round a neck, mm -hmm. what, what's that taking out? What process does that eliminate by okay. using it? It will, you can, it'll make it to finish really quite neat and tidy. It'll take out if you don't want to add an actual facing that ticks in that can sometimes sort of like Puff poke up, up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll poke out, um, things like that. It actually takes out, because it's already got the stay stitch in, a lot of um, patterns will sort of tell you when you've sort of cut through such a deep curve like this, because you're going through a bias sort of part of the, the fabric, it will really stretch. Mm. And if we don't put some stay stitching in, it can actually distort it. So the stay stitching will actually help to keep you the, the symmetry. In, in shape. So it's going to keep, the help neckline. maintain the shape yeah. of the actual garment itself. Okay. Because it's cut on the bias, it will actually work and stretch quite well 
so it will work with the curves really. which obviously is important for a blouse or yeah, for, a, for totally. a top yeah sometimes as well um it always it also takes out the elimination so some of the the patterns will sort of say just literally double fold or turn in and sort of stitch in place but because we've got such deep curves again you end up having to sort of clip into it it splays out it then sort of just goes into all sorts of shapes so it's a really good so product it's quite pliable because it, it will give in yeah. a curve it's you can just literally apply that to the curve without yeah. having to yeah. clip into it and then it will it exactly will, you yeah. can still maneuver it without so what I've done on this one, this is a blueprint of the blouse that yes. I made for, yeah, for earlier on. Yeah, I'm wearing this morning. <laughs> Got it on all day. <laughs> so I thought, well, this will be absolutely great to showcase this, although I didn't use it on that one. I've actually put a bias yes, trim a on trim the inside in out of the same fabric. <laughs> but as we can see, this is the blouse Amanda made. Okay. We've got a trim on this one, but we're going to, but this is what you could do instead if you wanted yeah. to, if you didn't want to go for the okay, bias Okay, so if trim. you don't want to actually use bias binding, um, you don't have to, you can use this. So on the back, whether the camera can sort of get in, I've sort of done a part done piece. So this is where it's actually fused onto the edge and then you iron it down and then I've just used a twin needle to then straddle over the top. So you've got a nice row of double stitching so it looks really professional because yeah, when you look at that. your, your um, normal sort of ready-bought things from the shops, you'll usually find that you've got a twin Sort of row of stitching and then on the back it then has a zigzag across okay and then that just actually anchors do you have to do that to, to keep it in place you Is don't have no. no you don't have to you can quite happily do a single line of stitching if you haven't got um a twin needle so you can do it one single line and then if you did want to do another line parallel to it, it you can do it underneath as well so that's not an issue at all if you've got an overlocker, you could actually overlock that edge and then just do a single line of stitching again. Or if you're really indulgent and you've got a cover <laughs> machine, you can just cover machine it. Okay, but as I say, it will really give that stability. So, so let's see how we apply this then. It. Okay, so I'm going to do it onto the, the arm okay. facing. So you actually get five metres of this within this roll, so it's quite, we do quite a lot of armholes. Yeah, <laughs> it certainly will. But having said that, it's surprising how much bias you, you use. use on a top. Yeah. So what we do is the eight millimetre section has to actually go against the raw edge of the fabric. Okay, so you okay. butt that right up to the edge of right the fabric. Right up to the edge of it. Okay, yeah. so this is where we're going to need to get the okay. iron out. Should I swap right, you? Let's so get this out let's... first. Let's get the mat out. Okay. <laughs> so when we're using this, obviously because the iron is hot. Sorry, okay. do you cut it first? Would you? I don't. You tend don't. To, no, I will. You can measure it. You can sort of take that. You just off, do, do it as you go. But I just literally take it off the roll. So we're going to line that up and just very lightly heat that through till it bonds. So it's more of a pressing action, not an ironing action. If you do okay. an ironing action, it can actually drag it um, and it'll sort of go into all sorts of weird and wonderful straddles. That is very quickly. Yeah. And then it will bend around quite nicely. So again, just little presses on. And again, with that stitch that's in it, so you're working with the eight millimetre yeah. gap towards yeah. the um, the edge of the raw seat, this sort of... The, the raw edge, the yeah. raw edge, yeah. and then you've got the, the smaller four millimetre part away from. From it, that's yeah. it. So as I say, it's it's really important, and that's the, the lovely thing about this, is because it's already got that stay stitch in. So, and again, if you sort of like dressmaking, a lot of patterns will say stay stitch, and it's around the neck edge, um, as I say, because it just helps, and you do it just within your seam allowance, and it just helps to keep the symmetry and the curve from set, stretching out on your garment. It curved very easily, actually, didn't it? It certainly it did. did. So easy, you could have a go on the if you wanted <laughs> I to. I probably could. <laughs> and then you just trim off. As so, you go. yeah, so I'm just literally going to just trim that off. Okay. So then just to make sure that we're in place, a little press. And then <clears throat> it is a case of just literally, you've got then. And you can do that straight eights. away, even if it's still a little bit hot. It doesn't little need time warm. to adhere. No, or... it's fine. I'm impatient. <laughs> Sound like so me. I want things instant. OK. 
okay? And you're just working that through. Okay. And it will bend quite nicely. What else could you use this for, other than dressmaking? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think you I've ever used it. For, you just to, use yeah, it for dressmaking. Yeah, literally for sort of for your dressmaking. You could, I suppose, if you're um, working with any of your products, sort of if you're doing your bags or your rolls, you could actually use it through, um, through the edges in the same manner if you wanted to. Instead of a stay stitch? Yeah. bit to bend that through. Do you work with Visaline products a lot? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can get, uh, obviously you can always get cheaper products on the market, but it really is get what you pay for. Yeah. So this one's 6 95 As I said, you get five metres of this, um, so you can use it for those dressmakings, for those curves, whether that's in a neckline or in a shoulder. Um, this is the Visaline Iron-On Bias Tape. We're having debates this morning about how to pronounce that. IXGQ98, and that's 6 95 for the bias tape. There we go. So then I've just pressed that from the top. And you can see you've got a nice crisp, crisp edge. edge to the underarm. Let me okay. just show that one second. Yeah, sure. Let's just see. There it is there. You can just see that really crisp finish that that's given it. Lovely. Okay, okay. and then you'd then just stitch then that Then you would do that, like, as you said. Place. Yeah, you yeah. can stitch that into place and then that's going to stay there. Okay. Perfect. Right. So that's product number one. Product number one. In our Visaline <laughs> extravaganza. So, um, next up, which is, the, which is the most popular so far, first of all? Let's, it's the fleece. Okay, so let's have a look at that. It's the fleece embroidery backer. Okay. Which is the right. one that we were looking at this morning. Oh, this is where we get water involved. We certainly do. Okay. Okay, so there's so many things you can use this for. There's just, you could this probably, is really we, we cool. could probably do a whole show, sort of on, show on, on just these. Yeah. Okay, so if I Wait till you see these. These are really cool. Bits. I really hope you, ah, right. Okay, so if you're embroidering, okay, so. I, I've got an embroidery machine at home, so you can actually, I've just popped these through this morning, so we've got the butterfly and just the flower design, okay? So it's a really good stabiliser for the embroidery itself, so although it's, you know, it's quite pliable, I've got this double thickness as well, so you just put it into the hoop, okay? Set the machine going, we used a variegated thread, and then it just stitches out, and then you can then just cut around one little edge, and it just then you can then just use some water to actually. Should we do one? Yeah. Okay. So we've got a um, strategically placed cup under here and some q tips. Okay. So, so we just cut that away. Yeah. So just. And obviously you've embroidered through two layers there, so that's fine. You, that yeah, will still all come away. Yeah, it will. Um, you can do it through one layer, but at four o'clock this morning, I was just no. like. <laughs> <laughs> Pop it in the hoop. Okay. Okay. Right, so which one do you want to have a go at? Oh, should we, well, we've already got this one. Should we try this one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you want to do one naughty okay. one? Let's, Let's get you another. Let's trim oh. a little bit more down. So okay. we just apply the water. So yeah, so it's just, and it will just start dissolving away. Just disappears. Yeah, so you can sort of see it's that it's starting to break up now. So say it's, it's a fairly strong product, but it will, Dissolve through. So this, you could use this instead of um, the one that you would uh, tear away, like a tear away stabiliser. Yeah. yeah. If you can see here. So if you do, it's really good if you do, if you want to do some applique work <laughs> as well. This is great. Okay, so it's just, it starts to sort of go a bit mushy. Yeah. But we can just pull that away. Yeah. So then once you've got that, you can just apl you could, um, apply, apply that to anything. apply that onto, yeah. That. And just and the same with through. this one, which is what's happened here from this. If once you've you've taken this away, which is great as well if you have got um sort of 
porous parts within the yeah. within the embroidery because you get that you, then you can you know you, you can see straight through it you've got that movement as well so it's really lovely um i mean obviously we had christmas last week so <laughs> you could do um just a literally sort of a snowflake and you can attach a ribbon to them and you can have them then as like free decorations standing or yeah, decorations like that. through um so it's a really really good came away really easily as well and then you've just got that butterfly free to use and then you can just stitch that on top Okay. So what else can you use this for? Okay, so you can also then, if you wanted to, you can do um, free motion embroidery. <laughs> we might need a tissue or something. <laughs> We've, <laughs> We've got, got more. We've got... <laughs> Let's see. It's got to be okay. attached. We've got fabric. Oh, we'll use fabric. What else okay. Shall I do that? I'll do that as well. There fine. we go. Just give us a clean, okay. spring clean. Righty ho. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's on there. So yeah, you can use it for um, free motion embroidery. Yeah. You can also print on it. You can actually sort of put it through the um, the printer. Yeah. And you can do prints on it. You that's cool. You can do ink prints as well. So then you've got an outline that you can actually then free motion embroider on top of it. Oh, so rather than having a template, a separate template, you could print the template directly onto, onto this, this and then embroider over it. Yeah. And then, oh, amazing. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, what else? Shall we have a go yes. at this one? Okay, so this is called crashing. Okay, don't ask me why, <laughs> it's just called crashing. I don't know if you can see here, this texture. Let's hear it, here. it you, this is really cool. We make great for cushions, I think. You just get that really lovely texture. And two different styles as well, actually, here. Yeah, so what we did on this one, okay, the way that you actually sort of layer it up. So if we use a piece of fabric randomly cut a piece off because then you can actually cut it down and then again you can apply it onto bags or you could make your pockets out of um, bags and things yeah like just that. to add that bit of extra sort yeah. of um almost like decoupage on is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah on paper yeah. Yeah. then yeah. you've it's got, got it, it has that sort of 3d effect doesn't it yeah so you cut a piece of your soluble fleece just one layer this time just one layer of this one okay and then you use a sheet of the bonder web Okay, so the bonded wave comes on sort of like a, a paper backing. Yeah. And so you can then sort of see the shiny edge of it. And this will actually peel away. She says. This is a bit like having to find the end of double-sided tape. tape. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so it's, it, in essence, it is literally a sheet of glue. Okay. So it's quite sort of transparent through there. Okay, so you sandwich this up. So you have fabric, you have your bonder web, and then you have your soluble fleece. Okay, now you can do it with either two layers or one layer of your bonder web. Okay, so two layers of bonder web. Two layers of bonder okay, web. Okay, yeah. So this one that I did was with two layers. And this one was with one layer. Right. Okay. okay. So that one's that little bit it's, stiffer. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's definitely more structure sort of thicker, to it. Yeah. And then this one. It's a bit more pliable. Then, yeah. Okay. So that so it's actually the bonder web that affects the end result more so than the fusible. The fusible. Fleece. Once we start to put some steam on it, that's what then really shrinks it down. Yeah. Okay. So what we do now is literally just channels of sewing. Okay. So this is all. This isn't actually stuck together at this point. You've just got no, to hold it. Would you pin it, or would you just go for it? Just go for it. Okay. You haven't got to be super accurate. Or so I'm just literally going to cut. cut. So different channels. You don't even have to sort of. You can just chain it back round. So you can just whiz this down. It doesn't have to be particularly yeah. accurate. Or... No, not at all. You can do it as close. Alternate oh, we're already distances. running low on stock of this, so if you do want this, please make sure because it's brand new today. And if it's in your basket, just check it out. TNGQ98 for your fleece embroidery backer. You'd need to get that one now if you do want that one. So say it's a really good product if you want to, if you're sort of in, um, doing applique work. If you don't you want could, to, but you could use it for. Um, on a, like, actually, you know, you said about pockets, but if you had a dress or anything, you could have a pocket, mm. couldn't you, on a dress yeah. or a skirt made up with this. Just to add a bit of um, 
interest really, a bit of texture. That's right. And because it's soluble, um, obviously you haven't just got to do it with a Q-tip. Once it goes through the washing machine, it will dissolve could even more. Could you just more. do that straight away and not do it with a yeah. Q-tip? You could just put, put it straight, straight in the washing machine. Yeah, or, you know, it depends what you sort of like working on, but um, I've done a lot of applique work in the past and you generally I would use like a stitch and tear underneath and just tear that away. But obviously that stitch and tear is still underneath your actual um, fabric. So it's sort of like adding another layer. So if you want your applique work, your finished product to actually be a, bit, a little bit, bit softer. Yeah, a bit finer. Yeah, and still have movement, then this is a great product to use. I think that's a really great thing you said as well, that you can print templates straight onto it yeah. for embroidery. So then rather than having to go through that process of tracing or of having to do it, you know, to do it twice, you can just go straight onto your machine. Once that's you... right. Um, you can even do it with um, like a print stamp as well. Uh, with Oh, like an like, ink stamp. Yeah, ink yeah. stamp, like with paint as well. And you just sort of think, well, would it dissolve? But if you just sort of take some of the excess off of it, then um, it will still print from still onto it. it. Yeah. Work. So if you pop that this in the washing machine, the, um, the fleece embroidery backer, will well, that won't damage your washing machine in any way. Like, obviously, there's a little bit of residue, yeah, isn't there, yeah, that's left, but, but that wouldn't do any, it's not going to cause any no, damage. Not for the small amount that you've got and the amount of water um, that's going through. It will be enough to sort of wash it all away. Okay. Okay, so... Sorry, so this is a That's little fine. bit of a boring bit. We could I can, just do this section. Yeah, I'll just sort of trim this but once bit you, So you do lines, or, I, and I suppose as well you don't have to do them. You, you could do no, zigzags or you could do... You could do, do wavy lines if you wanted to, yeah. and it'll just sort of change the structure. So I've just literally whipped these through. They're not particularly straight. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so I just show you through. So at this point, we've got our fabric, we've got our bond web underneath. I don't know if you can see this on this side. You've got your fabric, your bond web, then you've got your fleecing on the bottom, and then Amanda's just done lines of stitches all the way down that, okay? okay. And again, you can use a contrasting thread. I mean, I've got a very pale blue on top of this, but I even used... A yeah, you've got like a green on, there. On the, the cream one. Soft blue. Okay. Oops. So. Okay, so again, okay. it's Half then... the stock of this has gone, so please do check out your baskets if you do want this one. Okay, so we turn it over, and we then... You don't want to touch it with your iron. Okay. Oh, okay. We just literally want to put some steam on it. We need to watch this in action. This okay. is literally going to start happening. So you're just applying steam there. Yeah. Uh, I haven't got the steam button on. You so can already start to see how that side, compared to the flat side, is puckering up. Ah, right. So it goes pretty quick once it goes. Oh! So the more steam you apply, the more of the crinkled effect you will get. It's kind of acting like a magnet, isn't it, to the, to the fabric? As that does start to crinkle up, do you just have to have the iron slightly higher to stop it from touching, coming into contact yeah. with it? Yeah. So you just... You can turn wow. it over. So you can sort of see <laughs> that ruching. That's so quick. Crashing effect. Crashing. I wonder why... Maybe it's like crashing waves. On this blue, yeah. it does look a bit like a wave, doesn't it? Okay. That's so clever. It almost, it almost looks like shearing when you've done a shearing with the elastic. It's, as well, it just—it really does. When you touch it, it, it's got a completely different texture. It gives a really, yeah. a really different sort of ruched, um, puckered. But it feels it's stiffer as well, doesn't it? So yeah. it, it would be good for pockets actually, because it would be more durable. If really you've got things in there. Yeah. It's um, and it just adds ah! a different dimension. Then. And actually, combined with that, just in one section, yeah. you could have that on the top, top and then you could leave it. You could do a plain. top, couldn't you, and have like a band around the top of like this and then the rest of it plain like that. That's a really cool effect. So I just love it. Absolutely love so, it. So quick and so effective as well. That wasn't complicated in any way, was it? it no. was... So, yeah, I think it's really, really good. And then once you've done that, you, you, you need to take this away just with water. Again, yeah, I mean... This is still on the back, but once you've put that through the washing machine, it would sort of like come just away come and you still anyway. keep that, but yeah. But you, it's fine to actually leave that and you can then sew through that to attach it. As I say, if you're putting it onto something, um, you can sew through that, no problem. And it's just gonna give that 3D effect. And can you just use um, just a normal thread to go through this once it's yeah, all? Just yeah, just normal poly cotton and thread. Everything yeah. all works absolutely fine, normal foot and everything on the machine. Yeah. Amazing. I love okay. it. Brilliant. That's great. So TNGQ98, over half the stock of this one has gone. 395. You get a whole metre of it. So you could do quite a lot of quite a lot of projects with that. Totally. <laughs> so the other one that we were going to have a look at. 
Now, whether we want it, whether we've got time to do this or whether we come back we'll to it afterwards. We'll have a quick look at it, yeah. Okay, this is great for actually sort of using all your scraps up. Okay, so we've all got bags of scraps and ribbons and trims. And again, just literally, you can then, you put a mount it in between two pieces of your solid fleece. Okay, so I've got sort of a, a bag of little scrappy in bits stash. in the stash. So it's just literally sort of... You just some, accumulate stuff, don't oh, you? Yeah. Just like ribbons I think this was and... when I went through my sort of cross-stitch embroidery stage. <laughs> and I've got sort of a whole the bag phase, of... Yeah. The phase. So just literally layering it through. You can put bits of ribbons. You can then sort of like chop little bits of fabric or... or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Put another piece on top. There's, I've got a whole host of it here. <laughs> so you just then sandwich that in between. And then literally just free motion embroidery all the way through it. Make sure that your lines of stitching actually cross over. You don't just want channels because you'll get little bits drop out here okay, and there. Okay, so it needs to sort of uh, cover the whole, whole thing. thing. This is yeah. exactly all over, yeah. So again, whether the camera can pick up, you can sort of see some of the threads. And it'd be really quite cool to do it with like metallic thread as well. So yes. you'd really get a nice sort of like glitter going through sheen. it. And then so you're basically okay. making another layer of fabric out of your scraps. And as I say, there's lots and lots of different techniques. You can do collaging with it as well. You can actually mount it onto um, a piece of fabric first, then start sort of building up with the bond web, little sort of chunks of that, then bits of fabric, um, little bits of wool, anything. And then, anything. Yeah, but and you then could put just your solid a, You could just take a small section of that and put it onto, yeah. you know, just add some detail somewhere. Well, you can literally sort of like make a whole sort of sheet of new fabric and then chop that up to then start putting it in. parts that you like. Because you might yeah. not even like all of it. You might have a mishmash in one part where you think, oh, those colours are a bit clashy. It looks or... a little bit, yeah. 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 <laughs> but you could take, you know, a small section sure. and then put those in there. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Just so that, you know, we can't guarantee your orders of these now. We have got really limited stock um, on this product. So I think it's because there's so many things you can do with it. You've got your it's... embroidery, you've got using your scraps, you've got it's this brilliant. Crutching. I mean, you're literally making fabric out of your scraps. Out of just your yeah. folder of... Uh, your stash uh, basket, you know. written off, really. Never... Um, lose it at all you'll just keep <laughs> this on is why you hoard stuff tndq98 for your item number for that one so i'm just okay. going to recap those um fabric bundles and we're going to come back to amanda because we want to change this machine so we no i'm okay do... well we'll just use the, the the other machine if we then want to sort of like do oh, any okay, of those but i'm quite happy okay, to sort of like then. come back to that because obviously i'm conscious of time and there's like so many other things to get on to start showing yeah okay. okay we'll show the next one in just a second i'm just going to recap those solids bundles so no problem don't i'll tidy up you can stay tidy up so, um, as I said, we've got these two solids bundles in this hour to add to your stash. Um, whether you wanted uh, a natural sort of colours bundle, so you've got those foresty fills in creams and browns, and we've got an, a blue one as well. So, starting with the blue one, you get two and a half metres of fabric in total, so half a metre of five different fabrics. Um, so, you've got your navy blue here on the top, which is obviously just a classic um, dark navy. Then underneath here, you've got your dark blue. You've got sky blue, cornflower blue, and azure. Oh, this is your pearl on the bottom as well. So you've got half a metre of all of these blues. There it is on your screen, SOGC48. And that's 15 95 for that one. And then your other option is a naturals bundle. So this is more um, browns and greens. I love the green in this. It's a really gorgeous, um, gorgeous colour. So you've got your cream on the bottom here, half a metre of that. Then you've got that lovely sort of khaki green. Then you've got cappuccino, mocha and chocolate. This one here is your ochre and your chocolate on the top there. A really lovely bundle there, CPGC 67 for that one, 15.95. Now, the first thing we saw in this hour this morning was our roll here. So this is, let's just, well, the first thing we actually, Amanda was showing was your, was the iron-on bias tape. We're going to look at this, um, this lovely sort of fleecing in just a second. The bias tape that Amanda just used was what we had on, we've got it on the shoulders and on the neckline of some of our garments. A really great way if you don't want to have to stay stitch something, you can use this instead. It works around curves and also it's, it's just, you adhere it with, um, <laughs> I've got fusible um, backing on my fingers. You just adhere this with the iron so you can just use, use the iron straight onto that and it will just stick to your fabric, a little uh, sort of acting in the same way as Bonderweb would. So you get five metres of that for 6 95 
IXGQ98. Again, we're really limited on stock on that. That's been very popular this morning. And it's 12 millimetres in width, so you've got um, sort of an eight uh, millimetre bottom section that you put closest to the raw edge and then four millimetres that you face away from it. Now, something else that's been really popular has been the iron cleaner. So we've never had this on before. This is to clean your iron. It does exactly what it says on the tin. So if perhaps you've got burns on the bottom of your iron or any residue, we use this in our office. In fact, Amanda used it this morning on our iron. Um, you can use this to just take away any residue that's on there. You know, your um, scorch marks, any burn marks. You just pop this on the bottom of the iron and you sort of warm your iron up. You pop this on and then you can wipe that off with a cloth. QRGQ86, and that's 2.95 for that one. So let's have a look at our next Visaline thing. What's up next, Amanda? Let's have a look at this water. So we're going to look at the um, the foam, okay, and what we can okay. sort of do with the foam. So this is a product that we uh, one of the samples in the the studio that we sort of like sort of like show. Um, so it's really sturdy. So it will actually sort of like it stands yeah, up by stands itself. up on itself so whatever the size of the bag it's um so it's i always sort of say it's a bit like a pop-up tent you can sort of like screw it, it does, off it's and just it just sort of, literally got, comes back you know, again yeah it, it has got a lot more structure than just a regular bag work it, it would it's a lot thicker isn't it with that yeah. in there so it sort of like saves even when you sort of put sort of like two or three layers of batting through it's the batting will still sort of the cotton batting it, has a it still collapse. sort of collapses this will just literally sort of stand up on its own it's um washable you right. can obviously you can embroider onto it you can stitch through it it's just a really lovely product you can wash it it's, yeah it is washable yeah. yeah it's fully washable so we started to sort of like mess around yesterday and so you can do, um, I was just like messing around to do a place mat. So just literally two and a half inch squares, strips, did it into the squares, and then I've just used this cork fabric that I was dying to have a go at that we've had <laughs> in. And then just literally just use it and do, oh, that's one of my dog's hairs as well. <laughs> okay. Um, little wally dogs all over the place. Um, and just start, and then you can just literally stitch onto it. Okay, and it just gives that real so nice you just sort stitch of all the way. Th you just stitch, stitch all, the all the way through. through. It. Yeah, you could if you wanted to put your backing on and stitch so you've got your quilted area through the back. Yeah. Um. So it's entirely up to you, really. So I was going to just sort of like sort of show how you can. What's the difference between those? this and what you would use for a quilt? Um, it's a lot more sturdy. Okay, it's a, it is thicker. It's got a, a thicker loft to it. Um. And yeah, it's just it's spongy, isn't it? It's very, very spongy. Because you can't feel it. I feel like yeah. I need to explain to you. I don't know if you can see here. If I just sort of, you can, you can almost see here. It is like a sponge. It's got sort of yeah. those tiny little um, holes inside. You can just see that there. But it's, it's sort of got a really um, spongy feel to it. You can sort of see on the bottom. If you look at that, but it comes as one big roll. I don't know if we've got. Where is the roll? We're over here. Let's jump yeah. out and grab it. Okay. But you get loads of this. You get a metre of this. I'll swap size with you, Amanda. No so you get all of this. <laughs> yeah, and it, it goes loads of it. such a long way. I mean, obviously, if you're only making sort of small bags, yeah. you're going to get loads out of there. Um, we said as well, placemats or runners. runners yeah, the, the possibility are endless, really. We use loads of this. Um, Let's show us how we... How sometimes you... with the, uh, the seams... OK, if you're working on a very small seam allowance, OK, I would do your seam allowance and then you can always sort of like cut back a little bit just to sort of stop any of the bulk. So you would have it over the edge. You would go yeah. for a bigger piece of the... Yeah. OK. And then cut back afterwards. OK. Because it is so thick and spongy, always increase your stitch length up if you're then sort of quilting on the top of it. OK, so I've increased mine up to a 3.5. And then it just glides through. Okay. Did you need to change your foot at all for that? No, it's just I've just kept it on the regular foot and I'm just using the seam of the, the, the blocks to actually keep a measurement of it. So I'm just going to sort of keep it nice and simple and just like let the, the colours sort of show themselves off. I tell you, I think this will be, because of the texture of it, it's great for anything I think you're making for children. Because it's very soft, isn't it? Very it's tactile. Very, yeah, it's very tactile. It's the sort of thing that you really want to, to touch. Yeah, um, you could use it in, if you was making, say, changing mats, yes. anything like that, yeah. would be absolutely or ideal. Or a bag, like a changing bag. Yeah, if you're doing a large it is, it does area. Have a, a squidge. It's just got a... Yeah. 
If you're doing a large area, I would sort of like um, spray it first as well with a temporary adhesive. All right, and then okay. that will just sort of like then keep it into place. Okay. And then I think I might just sort of go across. If you were yeah. doing a really big piece, would you, could you just cut this into sections and just do one bit at a time and then attach them? Obviously, do you know what I mean? Like if you had one massive, um, one big bag and you couldn't cut that from one length of the, um, of, of this, would yeah. you be able to do one side and then attach it together? Yes. Yeah. 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 And it'll go through, you, you know, under your presser foot without a problem at all. And even if you have got smaller bits, what we've done in the past as well, is that if you butt it up to each other and then put a zigzag stitch across, yeah. you can sort of then make your small piece into a larger into a piece. Bigger one. And it won't sort so of like show. Maybe if you've even got some left over that you're yeah. trying to, yeah. Yeah, you can piece it together and you, you don't see the ridges at all. That was piecing. That was what I was looking for. That was in a roundabout way where I was trying to get to. This is the first time we've ever had a Visaline sort of special on the show this morning. So all of the products this morning are premiered. They're all from Visaline. So lots of different things that they have on offer that perhaps you might not have seen before. Or they're the sort of things you sometimes sort of see in a shop and you don't really know quite what, what, quite what yeah. it's for or what you would use it for. So hopefully giving you some ideas this morning of how you can apply them, um, you know, to actual real life projects. Yeah, than... the, I mean, the, their product range is so vast. And even when, I mean, I'm looking down and I'm like, what? And new things I coming saw. out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there are, there's just like so many products, they're fantastic. But as you say, they are known for being superior, they are a high quality product. They are, they are. You know, they do do what they say. Yeah, if I'm ever sort of like, oh, shall I try it? I don't actually ever hesitate ordering it into the, uh, the studio because I'm kind of like, yeah, I can guarantee that, that it, it will do the job. It will do what it says that it will do. So, just... It's a very easy product to use, very straightforward. Yeah, yeah. And just... It does give it as well, when you've applied it to something like this, say this was a placemat, it gives it some depth. Does, a so lot more you, depth got, than what like, you would like with you your regular quilting. Like you have quilting. a quilting effect, but more so, like yeah. you get more of a 3D effect with that coming off. Okay. So coming sort of, creating some height away from the fabric. I would then just literally trim through. Really gives it a 3D effect. And quickly as well, without, you know. It just helps to sort of line up. Speedy Gonzalez with that cutter, aren't you? You can tell that that's, that's in your hand all the time, just. <laughs> Okay, so once I always like it, once it's like neatened off, um, your project just looks so much better than all the little tatty ends. Okay, and then as I say, we could then mount it onto the back, trim through, and then add a little bit of binding. Yeah, or I'm just going to say, what would you do with your wedges? Would you go for binding? You could either put a binding on it, or if you actually had a, a bigger piece, you've got in you can see it more in these um, sort of side lines here. But you do get that, if I, I'm trying to show you where you can really get that depth there. Just creating that with that foamed fabric. So this is a sewing foamed fabric. So the other one that we, the other product we were just using, the embroidery fleece was an, an iron or steam, wasn't it? Yeah. This one is to be um, sewn into place. Um, XFGQ02 for this one from Visaline, that's 9 95 So what's our next one? Right. Decaville. The next one is the Decaville. Yes. Love this one. I absolutely use loads of it. Okay, so one of my ladies, yes, I've made this, yeah, bags, I've bags, made this bags. bag so many times with uh, people <laughs> and, and bless her. Thank you, Suzanne. I was like, <laughs> oh, Suzanne. I'm not making a full bag for the show. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I was like, can I borrow your, your sewing bag? So literally the Decaville, it's got a real leathery feel to it. Um, but that's, that's got so much structure. That's got yeah. nothing in it. That's just standing up by itself. So it's a little bit like the, the foam. It will give the structure. And it will, I mean, this is over a year old, so it's, um, 
it's standing the test yeah. of time. It's it certainly well. does. It's weekly. It's stuffed to the brim <laughs> with all of her sewing gear. So uh, I was like, bless her, thank you so much. And she was like transferring Getting everything yeah, out of it the other night. Yeah. So yeah, so it really does sort of like stand up on its own, but without the sponginess. If you didn't want the product... That squidgy, yeah, yeah. If you didn't want it to be so thick um, and squidgy, then as I say, this is great. It's really it's good shiny. if you're doing caps as well, or brims oh, on yes. hats, absolutely yep. perfect for that. Again, you can sew through it quite easily. And it's just so easy to use. So again, I've sort of cut these. What I thought I could sort of show how easy it is to use. To do a pocket. And just to do so a also pocket. Also, you could just use this for a pocket, couldn't you? If you wanted to, yeah. you know, you could have a, a normal sort of tote bag or whatever and add a sturdier pocket or something on the front. Yeah, even, just any sort of like small area that you wanted just to give it that little bit of extra sort of stiffness, whether it's like the flap of a pocket or whether you're doing like a wallet or... Yeah, it's just no Lots end. of options. So, as I say, it's quite a leathery sort of feel. It's quite thick, isn't it? Yeah. Now, this is um, the Decaville Light, I think. Is it? Yes, yeah. yeah, it is. Okay, so you can get Decaville and Decaville Light. So, the Decaville is a little bit stronger, but as you can see, even as the light one, it still, is, yeah, it still stands. Just, you've got a shiny side, again, which is where the adhesive is. Okay. okay. So, the matte side, okay, is the back of the product. So... Again, you just put the adhesive side, yeah, yep. against the wrong side of the fabric, but yep. with the spectrums, there's not really one side or the other. Mm. And then you're then going to apply some heat. Okay. So, so shiny side to wrong side of yep. the fabric. Okay. Put bags in bags, put crashing in the bag. <laughs> so again, like all sort of um, products, it's a pressing action. I see quite a lot of people, they try and iron, yeah. um, and especially on some of the um, the finer interfacings, it will just drag it, and it just then sticks to the bottom of your iron, so you need the, the iron, iron cleaner, cleaner then <laughs> comes out, which is perfect if you've got that. But yeah, it just then can actually um, almost rip up your, um, your garment as well, and you sort of get stuck everywhere and you get bits where you really shouldn't be. So it's so, definitely a pressing So it's a pressing an action rather than an iron. So again, they sort of take anywhere between six to 10 seconds to adhere. Okay. Okay. Through there. Oops. And it is recommended, again, not for the impatient like myself, <laughs> but it is recommended to let your product sit for about 20 minutes. I'm just going to peel that off because there's a little bit of cotton in between that I can see, but it will adhere back down to it. You can already see that starting to stick, can't you, Dave? Yeah. So yeah, it, uh, the manufacturer's instructions does say allow sort of 20 minutes, let it go cool for 20 minutes, just to really sort of set in place. If you were doing this for a bag, would you adhere this to the um, lining or would you adhere it to the the right side of the, the, you know, the external fabric? You can do either. It depends where you want your structure. When we did this one, we did it to the actual outer. Oh, okay. Because that's where we really wanted the structure. It was fine to have the lining sort of soft softer. inside. Okay. Could you do both? You could do both and that will really, really double it up. Double it up. Um, the other uh, product, well, we've used this, and the other one we've used it is, you know, when you want to do sort of some upholstery, sort of on your dining room table yeah. um, chairs, on just on the, the seat pads, because you get such sort of funky uh, fabrics, um, patterns, the crafting cotton isn't really strong enough and wearable. For wear and tear of people sitting on chairs. <laughs> However, if you back it with the Decaville, it just changes the structure loads, and it will actually then wear... Gives a it a better. bit more durability. So, for... Yeah, so that's another sort of product um, item where we've used it as well. We've okay. got about four minutes left. We're okay. whizzing through today. Okay. So that once that's adhered there, you just leave that. You can yeah, you just stays just... in place and then you would attach the um, the other side of the fabric, so the lining in this case. You'd, that's right. You just well, attach that yeah, on. Yeah, so for, this would be sort of like for the outer pocket. So this would be the back piece. So that would need adhering to it as well. Okay. So, so you, this is if you're doing both sides of the pocket. Yeah. So, yeah. could I ask you to do that for me? I can try. Would that be all right? Yes. And then I can then. If I so we're just literally going to press this. Just literally I'm pressing pressing the lining. I was listening, Amanda. 
So I'm just going to then trim off any of my little bits that... Producer Paul says he's impressed with that. <laughs> <laughs> you did have a bit of a shock of a wide eye. of like, <laughs> yes, give me to iron. <gasps> OK, so... I'm I've not got... ironing, I'm pressing, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. So what I've done is the Decaville piece, okay, and another lining kit together. Some I think I've done it. Yeah. Did it stick? I think so. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, stuck. It's all stiff. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a press down. We'd then just top <laughs> stitch across. That's it. So it's so strong. It must need a little bit. So we then can top stitch across. So I'm just going to take my needle position over. This is called Decaville, if you've not seen it before. This is from Visaline. Um, this is SHGQ26 is your item number for this one. Really great for adding structure to bags, to pockets, also for caps. That's definitely, that's, yeah. that's something that I would be, that feel to me is sort of synonymous yeah. with in a cap. The, that's yeah. how, in that's the how a cap, yeah. in the peak of a cap. Um, it does give you that sort of thickness and a bit more structure. So it stands, it gives you that 3D sort of um, standing. That's right. Okay, so this would be the side pocket of our bag. So again, we can just then trim off any overhang. I mean, you can, if you wanted to, if you've got a large area, you could actually fuse it to um, your material and then just literally cut out your pattern pieces oh, straight it. from so it. So you could just yeah. do that with all of your fabric to start yeah. with. Okay. And then we could then attach the pocket piece onto this area. Okay. That's a good idea, actually. So if everything you're making is going to have Decaville on it, you might as well just do the whole, the whole fabric, the whole yeah. piece of fabric. and then just sort of do cut out from it. This is a metre of it, so you could do a whole metre and then just cut from it as you go. That's it. OK, and then we can then just literally... And now, congratulations to everyone joining us so early this morning for all these premieres from Visaline. They are selling really quickly, lots of the stocks going for all of these different fabrics. So please do check out your baskets. Or you can give the call centre a ring 0800 112 4433. We've got a minute. This has gone so Ooh, quick. It certainly has. It's because there's too many things you can do with all of these. So what's your favourite product. product, you think? I have to say, I think it's the um, embroidery, the fleece, that, yeah. you can, that you can soak away. Because I think the fact you can use it for free motion embroidery, but you can print onto it for to do embroidery on, and you can then also use it for scraps. There's just too many options. options. There's so many things you can do. So there we go. There is a pocket, and then you just then start putting the rest of your, your bag stands. together. It, just has, it, got, just... it has got that. Look, we can see here. You, know you could almost use that as a file, like a... Um, yeah, uh, a document file, couldn't you? Because it's got that structure to it. Lovely, gorgeous. So thanks very much, Amanda. No we problem. didn't get around to our bonder web, the other bonder web. We ran out of. We've got too many visaline things to show you. Um, but you're back at ten o'clock. We are. And yeah. we're making blouse. This, yeah. magic. We're making this blouse that Amanda's made. Um, so we're back doing that at ten o'clock. You can go and grab a cup of tea. Or Thank coffee. you so much. <laughs> I think I've got I a dart to put in yeah. the, the, the blouse. <laughs> Um, great, so perfect. So we'll be back. Amanda will be back at 10 o'clock. And um, let's just go over and recap those solids bundles on the other side. So thank you very much. Thank you, I'll see you in a second. So this morning we've had those different um, Visaline fabrics, those different Visaline products. Um, we've got the iron cleaner, the bonder web, we've got the bias tape, lots of different things. Um, so if you're after Bonder Web, I know we didn't get around to showing you how to do it this morning, but here it is. Um, the Bonder Web tape, so this is great for hems or if you want to take up, take things up, perhaps at the bottom of trousers or skirts. Um, you can see that there, that's your violin double-sided Bonder Web. You get 1.2 metres. ZJHN18, and that's 2.95 for that one. And I have to say, my mum is, she would say she's a bit of a cheat. She definitely, definitely uses this for taking up trousers and skirts. School uniform, she used to always use this. So, um, then next up, we've also got the um, iron cleaner, which has been really popular this morning. So, Amanda uses this on our iron, getting, getting rid of any um, sort of burns or scorches or scratch marks. Um, you just pop this on the bottom of the iron once you've warmed it up, and then you can wipe it off and it will take away that residue. It doesn't leave any residue on your iron, so it's not going to sort of leave uh, anything greasy on there. 
That's been really, really popular this morning. QRGQ86 for that one, again from Visaline. And that's 295. Then we also have the bias tape. So we've got this one here, which is the dark bias tape that you can use. Amanda used it for, um, you could use it for sort of the shoulder area or for curves in dressmaking, whether that's the neckline or the arm line. You can use that there instead of a stay stitch and you just iron that into place. So this is the black bias tape. You get five meters of that on here. You can just wind that straight off the card and pop that straight onto your garment. IXGQ98 and that one is 695. And remember, we've got those fabric bundles as well in this hour, two solids bundles, a blue and a naturals one. So we'll just, we'll just show you the pictures of those so you can see what they are. Um, the blue one, first of all, you've got your navy, a royal blue, a sky blue, a cornflower blue, and a pearl. So <laughs> lots of different blues in that bundle. And half a metre of all of these for your stash. And the other one is our natural one here. So we've got browns, cappuccinos, mochas, creams, ochre. You can just see that spectrum of colours there. Again, two and a half metres, 15.95. So after the break, you're not going to want to go anywhere. We've got brand new premier fabrics that we've never had on the show before. So we're launching those. We've also got the pens back in for colouring your fabrics or for marking them up. So don't go anywhere. Join me again in three minutes and I'll show you all of those brand new fabrics. See you in three. Follow us on Pinterest, search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at sewingquarter.com, visit our Facebook page Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. Tilly Rose returns to our studio on Tuesday the 1st of August with two inspirational hours using Thread's printable fabric. With Threads, the creative possibilities are endless, as you can print any image onto fabric from your home printer. And textile artist Tilly is here to offer a little inspiration. She'll show us how to enhance your printed images with machine embroidery to create beautiful effects. And she'll also demonstrate how to make a personalized quilted photo album cover. So join us for Threads with Tilly Rose, Tuesday the 1st of August at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. So we're going to show you how to do a backstitch. Now a backstitch is a great one to use when you haven't got a sewing machine available um, but you need to repair or fix a garment and the backstitch is a really strong stitch to do that with. First of all you need to start with the wrong side of the fabric first. So I'm just going to place my needle through to bring it through through to the front and then you're going to go backwards. So I'm going to do quite big stitches here so you can see what I'm doing. So that's the first stitch. Now this time you're going to come and bring your needle through but the same distance as your stitch and then you're going to go into the first hole that you came out and then go back through to the back and then I'm going to come all the way over again the same distance and then through again and just keep repeating that process. This is my final stitch now. So as you can see, there's my row of back stitches. And if I just turn that over for a second, you can see that it's almost as if it's double stitched along the back. So you can see it's a really secure stitch to do when you haven't got a sewing machine to hand.
Good morning, welcome back. If you've just joined us, I'm Amy Burrows. It's lovely to have your company here with me this morning. And we've got some brand new premier fabrics to show you in this hour. So new launches that we've not had on the show before, brand new in stock, lots of exciting fabrics to show you. Um, hot air balloons and violins. And also we've got those coloring pens back in. So you have to be quick on those because they always sell out. So first of all, we've got two solids bundles that we've bought in this morning that you can team with these designer fabrics. So again, great to add to your stash as with those blue and natural ones I just showed you in the last hour. We've got a monochrome option and we've got a really lovely sort of spring, uh, spring fill with our greens and pinks. Let's start with this one. So you've got your classic black on the top there. We've already got less than 10 of these available. So quick monochrome fabric. So you've got that black one there. Then underneath you've got a really lovely uh, sort of slate gray. Then you've got a softer gray. Then leaning more towards a slightly blue grey or a glassier grey. And then you've got your white as well. So you've got two and a half metres of fabric in total there, half a metre of all of those. QY GC 19 for that one, and that's 15.95. So if you want to use those perhaps to combine them or use them for binding or for backing or for uh, the lining of different things, then you've got all of those there to add to your stash. Then the other option that we have um, is more of a colourful option. So we've got greens and pinks. This has got a really spring-like feel to it. Um, you've got some, a really lovely soft pink on the bottom here, half a metre of this one. Then you've got a dusty pink, sort of a crushed raspberry type colour. Then you've got a bright pink there, candy floss pink. So these are all 100% cotton. Nice, rich, uniform colours. Then you've got that nice, bright green there. I think this is pistachio. And then you've got your grass on the top there, or grass, as producer Paul is saying in my ear. <laughs> so this one here is your grass on the top. DAGC41. This is the vintage floral bundle. We expect this to be really well to, uh, paired with a premier fabric that we've got coming up in this hour, uh, um, this hour which is a vintage floral uh, fabric. So we've also got some thread bundles that you could pair with those from Metla. So a really superior quality thread, 100% cotton, perfect for quilting projects. Obviously, if you're quilting and you're working with fabrics that are 100% cotton, you want to carry that through in the thread that you use as well. So I'm just going to grab those here. We've got two different options. They're, going, they're sort of seasonal. We've got an autumn one and a spring collection. I'm going to start with the spring collection because the colours in this team really beautifully with that vintage solids bundle because you've got your spring like greens, pinks, yellows. So let's just look at that. You can see these threads here. Lots of different lovely colours. So we've got on the end here, we start with like an aqua blue. Then we've got a soft green, a sunshine yellow, an orange. A nice soft pink there, which would work really beautifully with these pale pinks you can see here in this bundle. Then you've got a darker pink, a purple and a lilac as well. But that spring collection working really well with that vintage floral bundle. These have got a really high um, sort of tear resistance. They don't break easily. They're really lovely, um, lovely threads that are very high quality. Perfect for quilting projects. OREQ95 for those metal threads there. And the other option is an autumnal bundle. I can't think that it's autumn already. No, I'm not. I, I refuse to admit that it's, we're not, summer's not done. We're definitely still in summer, despite what the weather might be saying. Although apparently, well, I don't know in here, we haven't got any windows, but I'm assuming someone said that the weather is getting better outside. I don't know, let me know. So this is the autumn bundle here and really lovely, rich, those classic colours you, you would expect in autumn. So you've got lovely burgundies, some coppers, some lovely sort of, they've got such a sheen to these cottons here. Lovely bronzes and golds and oranges. That reminds me of sort of, I don't know why, like Canada, all those, those things, these leaves here, but really lovely sort of maple, your maple colours. AWEQ71 for that autumn bundle from Metla. And we know that you love these Metla threads because they are such a superior quality of thread and something that you can trust that's going to, you know, if, you, if you're investing in a, in, a, in a project, you want a thread that's going to hold, and these do. So you've got those two options there and your two solids bundles, which I'll move to the side. And now I get to do the premier fabrics, the brand new ones that we've not seen before. So let's start with hot air balloons. I'm going to grab, we've got two options in this. So this comes in a black and a white, and um, you've never seen these before, and they're really love they've got a really lovely, um, lovely feel to them. Let's look at this black one to start with. I'll open it up so you can see. 
100% cotton, really soft, but look at this lovely detail in the balloons. They've got a really lovely outline detail, um, which you can apply colour to if you want to, but also just lovely on its own as a monochrome print. It's got a very sophisticated feel to it. You can just see those outlines on the balloons themselves and the clouds floating there. Do you know, I've never been in a hot air balloon. I would like to do that. I've never ever done it. And a few of my friends who have booked to do it, it seems to get cancelled and postponed because it's so, such a weather dependent thing, isn't it? But I would really love to do a hot air balloon. I've jumped out of a plane, but I've not been in a hot air balloon. <laughs> So yeah, this is, um, this is the hot air balloons on black. Um, so you've also got the option to have this in white. So perhaps if you want a lighter background fabric, but really lovely soft print there. 355 for half meter, so great value as well for that new fabric. Now, as I said, we've got it in white. Perhaps you could team these together. You could go for something reversible. Here it is, let's hold that up the right way. We want the hot air balloons to be floating, not sinking down. So here it is again for half a metre, 355. This is in your ivory background here. So it's cream and black. But again, with that detail in the hot air balloons, you've got swirls, you've got lovely different um, sort of circles and polka dots and diamond prints going through there. Some nice teardrop shapes too. And again, your clouds. Brand new today, VNJQ34. So we've also got violins. So we've got some musical fabric. We should have background music for this. I won't attempt to make a violin noise because I don't think that would be very attractive, but we have got violin fabrics here. How lovely if you do play an instrument and perhaps you want um, a bag to take to music classes or you could cover a notebook with these fabrics, that would be lovely for that. So again, you've got it in black and white options with that classic violin shape. And um, you can just see that here sort of darting all around the fabric. You've got that nice angular shape through the middle of the violin. And then obviously in the body of the violin itself, introducing some nice curves. Again, these are 100% cotton. Lovely musical fabric. Perhaps if you want to do a cover for your um, for a music book. So that's your black. Then you've also got a white option as well. I'm going to pop those together so you can see. But here it is all ivory. It's actually called ivory. And um, so it, it is slightly cream. It's not a crisp white. Um, but you can just see that ivory one there again with those violin shapes in them. But you can just see them together. They do work really well too. The white has a very different look to that black or the ivory, but that's your cotton print violins, YSJQ19. And again, 355 per half meter. Now, we've also got some floral premieres, two new florals, which I love. These have got a really lovely vintagey feel to them, lovely color palette with your greens and pinks. So let's have a look first of all. Oh, I love this. I really, really, really like this one. So this is a dusty pink. Oh, this is stunning. So lovely. I might need to get someone, I say someone, one of the, our lovely guest designers to make, make something I can wear out of this. This is gorgeous. I'd love a top. I'd love a top or a blouse made out of this or a shirt. Um, so this is a linen look fabric. It is a cotton, but you've got a pink background there, that lovely dusty pink. And then you've got that really sort of classic vintage floral with your greens and creams. So these, all of these Premier fabrics are 110 centimetres in width. This is being sold by the half metre. I love it. I really love this one. Again, would make lovely cushions, curtains. You could add accessories to a bedroom with a lampshade. You could cover a bin in this. But I just think this is beautiful for clothes as well. YBJQ65. And now your other floral, which again, you could team with this, which I am also a big fan of, is the cream one. Oh, that pink. I love, love. I'm going to keep the pink out. I want to keep looking at it. <laughs> then this is, your, uh, this is your cream floral. Again, with that vintagey feel to it, you've got, your, you've got a lovely bright magenta pink in the buds of the flowers. And then you've also got your greens, introducing a little bit of lilac in this one too, and some yellow. Really lovely. So this is a linen look. It does have a different feel to our classic cottons. It does feel slightly thicker. Slightly more durable. So if you can see here, if I just show this is a, and if we can come in close, you might be able to see that it, it does have that sort of linen texture look to it. There it is, you can sort of see here, as opposed to a, a, a sort of a silky cotton. 
SJQ49. So that's our premieres in this hour. We've got two uh, hot air balloons, we've got violins, and we've got our vintage florals as well. I just want to show you that solids bundle as well that goes with this um, floral, just because those colours work really well together. If we bring this in, you can see how bringing in different solids also sort of brings out different highlights in the fabric. But if you bring in your, you've got your grass green, your pistachio green, your bright pinks and dusty pinks. But if we just look at those as one big collection, you can see it. If we can get a close up on those, you can just see those colours there. Really lovely. So that solids bundle is $15.95. But look at this dusty pink with this really perfect color match and again with that lovely soft pink as well lovely okay so Something exciting now. If you've not seen them before, perhaps if you've, um, you haven't seen the shows that we've had them on previously, we've got a collection of fabrics from Michael Miller that are called Colour Me fabrics. So you can colour straight onto them. Now, if you've got children at home on for summer holidays at the moment, grandchildren, or even just as something therapeutic to do for yourself, I got really carried away doing this colouring last time. And producer Paul's been doing some of this outside of work. Um, you can colour in your, you can colour in the fabric straight away with the pen. So you apply the pen directly to the fabric and you just colour away as you would on paper so we've got these pens back in stock they always go really really quickly um, these textile markers you're getting a whole um, range of different colors in there 20 different colors you can use these just to mark up your fabric if you want to uh, label things you know um, just to write names in them as opposed to sewing in labels but obviously also your coloring now these are a dual edge pen, so you've got a finer nib and a thicker nib, so there's two different options there depending on, on what you're colouring in or what you're marking. They're washable, um, so once, you've, once they're in place, you sort of leave them to dry for six hours and then you iron it, and then you can, you, it's, it's good to go. It stays on that decorated area um, forever. So it's a really lovely way to customise fabrics. So $12.95 for these, they are really, really popular. And as well, because you've got that whole range of colours in there, you can, you can use whichever ones take your fancy. So you're going to need some fabrics to go with these. I mentioned the Michael Miller collection. Now, the designer that created these, actually, um, the idea came about when she wanted to create a collection that she could use with her children. So she was inspired by her children and wanting to, you know, introduce them to sewing, introducing them to, to creativity and art and being able to customise things and make things how you want them. So two of those designs that she um, came up with, are we've got a fish one and we've also got a fantasy fabric. So I'm going to start, um, these, both of these two different prints come, one with a black background, one with a white, and there are two different print options. So first of all is your fish on black. You can just see that there. So you can see straight away how you could apply the colour to this, where you could fill in the lines with those pens and just, you know, customise it however you, whatever, in whatever colours you wish. You could just take one colour, you could take a whole, a whole uh, rainbow of colours if you wanted to and add those wherever you, wherever you seem, deem appropriate. Producer Paul said that when he's having a bad day, this is a really lovely way to de-stress. I have to say, colouring has become really, it's, it's sort of trendy, isn't it? It's become, it's, it, in terms of mindfulness, it's become almost like a, a colour therapy. But if you go, you know, if you go into, if you go into bookshops now, you see lots of colouring books for adults and people doing those just to take some time out. And we're all such busy lives, you know, addicted to our phones and social media and all of those things. And just to sit quietly and do some colouring. Helps you to be in the moment, nice and mindful. So this is your fish on black. It's 8.45. It's 100% cotton, so it's really lovely and soft. B-I-E-Q 68. I don't know if we've got it. Oh, yes, look. Let me just show you a little coloured in section. So this is an example of what you can do and how different it looks. You don't have to use colour on all of it. You could just do a small part of it. You can pick out different sections. I'd love to take the credit for that, but I didn't do that colouring. <laughs> I will do some colouring in a minute and once I start they won't be able to stop me because I love it. So then you've also got another fish option which is in white. So this is an opportunity here if you wanted to just colour the background and keep the fish monochrome or you can introduce colour all over or in just small areas if you want to. So this is your fish frenzy on white. Again that lovely soft cotton and lots of detail in the fins of the fish. And in the tail, got some nice florals and swirls and stripes, wavy lines. 
you've got the, you can be really creative with this. Do do whatever you seem, whatever you whatever you like the look of. ZXEQ72 is for the colour me fabric on white. Then we've also got two fantasy options. So these are a floral fantasy. So they're nice, big, a retro flower prints. Um, you've got these in black and white again. Let's look at the black first of all. Here they are. They are really sort of nice, big statement flowers. So you could fussy cut these. You could take a small section and applique it onto something. Really lovely. Um, Producer Paul actually used this for some reverse applique. Really lovely, these nice got different size flowers as well with those sort of stamens coming out. This bit here looks like a pineapple ring. <laughs> so that's the fant floral fantasy on black, Q-U-E-K-U-E-Q-90. And then we've also got that in white. Again, these work really well together if you want to pair them up and have, you know, a black and a white. And these fabrics do not have to be coloured in. You can use these in isolation. Just as a monochrome fabric, they are lovely, perhaps, if you want to keep a room nice and um, sort of neutral and just go with blacks and whites, then that's, you, you know, you don't have to apply any colour if you don't want to. It's just there as an option. But for children, this would be so lovely. You know, you could make um, an apron for when they do art. You could make lots of different projects with these. You could do cushions for their bedroom. You could make a bag for dancing or for swimming or for, for football or for fishing with the fish fabric. <laughs> VZEQ 47, again, 845 per half metre. I'm just going to show you um, how these look when some colours applied. Um, these, this has been put into a cushion. It's not on the fish or the floral. It's on a different Michael Miller fabric. But it just shows you, it gives you an idea of what you can create when you apply those pens. So let's have a look at this. Look, it's gorgeous. And also, what I love about this is that my, this cushion would be so different, my version would be so different to somebody else's. You know, you've got the freedom to, to add the colour in wherever you like and also in whatever combinations you like. If you just wanted to do yellow and pink or if you've got a room where you just want to introduce blues and greens, you can do that and with those, with those textile markers. Shall I do some colouring? Can I do some colouring now? Let's have a look at our new fabric and do some colouring on that. So the hot air balloons and violins, you can also colour on those. So I'm going to show you that first of all. Let's keep our coloured cushion there. Let's open these. I'm going to, oh, where do we open them? Have I got some open? Okay, so this is like Art Attack with Amy on a Friday morning. Okay, so let's look at these different sections we could do. We'll start first of all with our hot air balloons. These aren't Michael Miller. The hot air balloons and the violins aren't Michael Miller. But we just thought, why not? As they're monochrome, if you want to add some colour, you can. And these textile markers will work on any of these fabrics. So let's just go for something nice and bright so you can see it first of all. I'll show you with these pens. You've got that jewel tip. So you've got a nice fine nib there for the sort of more intricate fiddly sections if you want to use that end. And then on the other end, you've got a thicker nib for those um, thicker sections as well. So, no pressure, let's test out my colouring skills, here we go. So I'm just going to start first of all, you can just apply this colour straight on to the fabric, wherever you wish to. So you could just take this in sections, straight on there. Oh, I love doing this, it's so relaxing. Now, this fabric wasn't actually designed for colouring in, but we just thought, as it's black and white, if you want to add colour, you can. I'll just show you some other colours as well. But also, you can um, mix and match the colours. Let's grab a, a blue. Let's grab a yellow. So if you want to just add some, you can obviously combine the colours in whichever combinations you wish to. So as well with this, so you could just, we could just colour, could leave that black and white, you know, you're just adding a little splash if you get all the way through. These nice, these little sections here, like that section there. It is incredibly relaxing. Just add some dots, you don't have to do all of them, just wherever you fancy. And then you can do that with these pens. But all these different colours 
the option to just customise these however you want to. That's quite a dark one, actually. That was probably not a good colour choice, because <laughs> that looks black. Lovely. Let's go for another bright one. How about an orange and a yellow? So many different colour choices here. Let me introduce a second one, but you've just got... I can't get the pens out of my hand, I just want to carry on. I know you're there and I know you're watching, but I just want to carry on colouring. Look at these, you can just add this wherever you want. I feel very zen. <laughs> That's it there. Just adding that detail. I think this is a lovely project to introduce children to sewing as well. Just adding that detail. We're on summer holidays and the weather's being, isn't it? I swear that always happens. As soon as we break, as soon as the children break up from school, the weather changes. Let's have a look at one of, the, one of the other fabrics so you can just see. So that one there is the Hot Air Balloons, which is a premiere today. But we've also got um, the Michael Miller, which is the, this was the sort of the originated in colouring on fabric. So this is the colour me range. And um, this is the floral fantasy. So that's the, um, the black hot air balloons there that we've just done. And um, so you can see that's on the black background fabric. And that's where you start to apply the colour here. And then you've also got that in white. But let's look at this floral fantasy. So this is slightly bigger section, so you could use that thicker nib of the pen. Um, again, just applying the colour wherever you want to. Let's just turn that around. You can add all different sections. It's quite nice as well. You don't have to. You don't have to do it. You could just do it like that, so you get sort of an, an effect, like a smudging effect, almost like shading. Let's introduce another colour. Now, Michael Miller, we are very limited stocks on these fabrics. They are so, so popular. As are the pens, which always sell out. You're always asking for these fabric pens. Everybody loves them. Great value as well. $12.95 for 20 markers, 20 different colours. But you kind of have got almost 40 because you've got, you know, those two ends. It's like having a thick and a thin set. It's a really nice effect when you don't put that colour all the way through to the end. It just looks like you've shaded it in. And then let's just grab a green. If you want to go to those thicker sections as well, you can just pop that colour in the middle. So you just leave this for six hours, then you're going to iron it, and then it's fine. It's what the colour will be locked into that fabric. VZEQ47, that's for this, this fabric here, the Floral Fantasy on white. And these textile markers, as I said, you get 20 colours in there. Um, we'll get those up on your screens in a moment because we know these are really, really popular. If they're in your basket, just check those ones out because we've only got those back. We've managed to get those back in today because we know you love them. And these are just, I can't leave these all over the table. I need to put them kind of neatly away. Let's put those like that. Lovely. Okay, so, so for all of you eagle-eyed viewers, if you look behind us here, you may, might have seen we've got, a, we're keeping that monochrome theme. We've got here this lovely monochrome um, quilt that was made by Lucy Brennan. So you've got those black and white fabrics there. We, this, is, this was designed from a black and white um, quilting book that we've got on today's show. So you can see here, if you're just using that black and white, it can be really effective at creating depth, but also it, it's a statement piece that works really well. We say it's, we're almost like we're getting a different picture up every day here at Zone Quilter. Yesterday we had a, we had a a um, really colourful quilt. Today we've gone for monochrome, but you could use these um, hot air balloon or violin fabrics for a project like that. And also that solids bundle, monochrome solids bundle that would team really well for the binding and for that main central panel of the quilt itself. 
So this is a monochrome quilting book. You can see on the back here, actually, this is that, um, that cat quilt that Lucy's made. All of the um, details in here of how to make that, step-by-step -step instructions and photography. Now, these are, although it is a black and white book, they do inject some colour into some of the quilts. It's utilising black and white as those main colours. So let's just have a look through this. Shall I put this down so we can see? So in all of these, you get um, your cutting diagrams and then you've also got lovely step-by-step -step instructions and photography of what the end product looks like. So you've got things here like um, placemats, if we can see that here, introducing splashes of colour, the main focus remaining on that black and white. This is the cat quilt. Cat at place, if you want to make that quilt that you can see behind me this morning with those monochrome fabrics, so like with these um, hot air balloons that we've got this morning, you can see those there. These are the sorts of fabrics that would work really well for that cat quilt. And then you've got, you can see that they're just in place. You can see what it would look like sort of on a wall. But also you get all of your um, cutting, obviously, instructions. The placement diagram for the fabric. So looking at where to put the light and dark fabrics. You've got your templates here. This is a lovely one, night and day quilt, utilising those triangles. We did the star, we did a block from the Starry Lane quilt uh, with Lucy Brennan a couple of weeks ago. I'm just going to find that one, actually, if you want to watch back. Oh, we loved this one. Look at this with the branches. Just adding a tiny splash of colour where those birds are. I don't know if there's a bigger picture. Here it is. This is the one from the front cover. I think that's a really, really gorgeous quilt. Very classy, I think black and white's very, it's very classic. But where's that Starry Lane one? Let's find that. I think it's a little bit further. Maybe it's further. Here it is. The Starry Lane quilt, we looked at some of these blocks, how to, how to create both of these uh, blocks that you then put together to assemble the whole quilt. And if you want to go back on YouTube, we can find that. Uh, we'll find out the date for you for that one. But you can incorporate that into a quilt with your yellows and your blacks and whites. 15.95 for this one, DUMZ19. In the pink, so also introducing a splash of pink with your monochromes as well. <gasps> Look at that. That's stunning. Those new floral fabrics would look lovely with that if you wanted to combine those with a monochrome. But you can see here, you can just see it in the placement diagram and then what it actually looks like in reality. And then at the back, just finishing off your quilt, a conversion chart, sort of a metric conversion chart there, and also just how to finish with your binding. Lovely. $15.95 for that one. Some monochrome inspiration for these new monochrome fabrics this morning, whether that's the violins or the hot air balloons or those Michael Miller colour-in fabrics. Now, the most popular fabric at the moment is... Which one is it? The linen looks. These are my favourite. Oh, the most popular at the moment is the cream or the ecru. Let's look at that. Wow, half the stock of this is already gone. So this is a really lovely linen look fabric. It's slightly thicker. It is 100% cotton, but it's slightly thicker than those other cottons. Um, a bit more durable. Lovely if you want to create something, you know, home wear. If you want to go for cushions. These natural fabrics work really, this sort of natural feel to this fabric. Perfect for a conservatory um, or, you know, for, a, for even for the garden. If you want to create garden cushions or perhaps a, a kneeling pad. So it's a linen look, but a really vintagey feel, feel with that floral. Lovely sort of crushed raspberry colours in those blossoms, in that blossom and buds of the flowers. Also introducing some little elements of lilac and the golden yellow here as well. And your greens. 3.55 for half metre of this one. And let's just show what that um, solids bundle looks like with that as well. So you can just see here, we've put together a, um, a floral, a vintage floral solids bundle that colour-wise will work really well with this uh, floral fabric. So you're getting two greens and three pinks with this. Um, as a, as a colourway, it works really well together. So you've got this lovely soft pink on the bottom, then you've got that dusty pink there, a bright pink, a pistachio green and a grass. And let's go really crazy and bring in those metal threads as well that would work really well with that bundle. You can just see how, why all of these colours have been put together. That's that spring thread kit from Metla. That's a silk finished cotton. 
So if you're after this uh, linen look fabric here, this is 355 per half meter, FSJQ49. This is the most popular at the moment and it's, it's over half the stock has already gone on this. So if you do like the look of that one, um, then I'd encourage you to check out your baskets if you want to secure that order. What, what are you going to make with that? What, what, what have you got in mind? Send me, a, send me a message. You can go onto the website or studio at sewingquarter.com. Send me an email. We need some pictures in. Oh, perhaps if you've done anything in the Michael Miller fabric before, please send me a picture of what you've made so we can see because everyone, everyone's creations with this fabric will be so different depending on where you choose to apply the colour or if you've kept it monochrome and you've made a cushion or a bag or anything out of it. Please do send us in a picture. I'd love to see it. Um, studio at sewingquarter.com. So that's your um, crew, that linen look there, but it also comes in a really, really lovely dusty pink. Um, so this has got a really, um, it has got a vintage look in terms of the color palette as well with this one. They work beautifully together, but on its own, this one as well has got those um, crushed raspberry fl florals again, and those greens. This is brand new. This is a premier fabric today, a launch here at Sewing Quarter. Let's open this one out. See, if I open this out too much, I'm going to want something made. I'm going to want an outfit made out of this. Look, what can we, what can we make? A sarong? <laughs> really, really gorgeous print there. So this is being sold by the half metre. If you want, it's cut off the bolts. So if you don't know how we um, do those cut to measure fabrics here at Sewing Quarter, we can cut off as much or as little as you want in half metre increments. So if you want um, three metres of fabric, that would be six units. If you want five metres, then that would be ten units. Again, 355 for half meter, YBJQ65 for that lovely linen look fabric. Okay. Oh, we've had a message in about the owl fabric that we've coloured in. We've, um, unfortunately, we have actually sold out of that one. We haven't got that one in stock today. Um, hopefully, we will try to get it back in. We've managed to get back the pens and we've got that floral fantasy and the fish, but we haven't got the owl in stock, I'm afraid. So, let's look at those other premier fabrics this morning. That dusty pink and the accru there. Let's move our solids bundle. Oh, actually, as well, when you start to apply the colour to those Michael Millers, this works really well with the, um, the coloured in fabric because you can just see if you use those pinks and greens, you could just introduce those together. So perhaps for the backing of the cushion, if you wanted to back that in a, in a brighter fabric, that would work really well. So the violins, let's look at the white first of all. I don't play an instrument. I wish I did. I was one of those children that tried every single instrument and thought I might find one that I'd be really good at and it just didn't happen. I did the clarinet, I did the piano, I uh, did the drums, I did my grade one drum exam, that was, that was an experience. And um, well, I did the recorder, I was in a recorder club at school. Um, but yeah, I never, never quite cracked. Um, cracked an instrument and I wish I could. I'd love to be able to play the piano. I do sing a bit, actually. I, my background, I trained in musical theatre, so I do do a bit of singing, but um, I wish I could play the piano. I always think if you could get that, I just so admire anyone that can have a piece of sheet music and sight read it. I just think it's, it's, it's incredible to me. So this is your uh, violin fabric here on your ivory. It's a really lovely soft cotton. If you are musical, then there's so many lovely projects you could make with this. Perhaps a bag to take your, or a cover for your uh, folder or a notebook. You could make music stand covers, you know, to just to pop over the top of those stands that you can uh, pop your sheet music on. If you have, we used to have covers on our stands, you could use those for that. Then we've also got that in a black option. So it's a black background with that white outline and with that more, you know, keeping to that monochrome theme. You can just see that one here again, sold by the half metre, so cut off the bolt depending on how much or how little you want. Half metre increments for this one. Here it comes. This is the cotton print violins on black. There it is. 3.55 per half metre of that one. TEJQ01. Let's just look at those together as well. Your ivory here. It's like a piano, isn't it? Ivories. <laughs> the ivory and your black. Lovely. Then we also had hot air balloons. 
So the most popular is the black hot, hot air balloons at the moment. So let's have a look at this one and we can do some colouring on this one too. So um, this is uh, a really just your classic hot air balloon shape with that sort of teardrop shape and obviously all of the baskets and the clouds floating through the fabric on a black background. So this is a nice statement print. And if you want to apply colour with the textile markers, you have the option to do that as well. I must do that. I must do a hot air balloon. It's on the list. I can imagine that being quite, um, quite relaxing. Although not if it, if it <laughs> goes wrong. But no, I would love to do that. KXJQ37 for your black one. And then the option to do that on white. I was just going to keep that black one here a second so I can show you. We started colouring this in with the textile markers. I don't know if you can see here if we can do this on a close-up. But you can just see um, if you wanted to start to, to pop some colour onto this and customise it. And do you know that therapeutic mindful uh, colouring. Then you can do that here with the, um, the hot air balloon fabric. Again, this wasn't designed to be coloured in, but we did it because we just felt that monochrome fabric lent itself to um, adding the colour. If you want to um, do that just with the pens, I'll just quickly show you if you, you didn't see this morning. So in the pen pack, you get 20 different colours. You've got a whole rainbow of colours there. And they're um, a dual tip pen, so you've got a fine nib at one end and a thicker uh, nib on the bottom. So depending on which section, obviously, you're colouring in. If you've got nice, tiny little detailed sections where you need to apply the colour, you can do that. Again, these are great for labelling if you just want to write your name in anything as well. But let's have a look. If we wanted to just put that colour straight on, you can just literally colour this straight onto the fabric. I can imagine people being like, what's she doing? But you can just put the colour straight onto here. Straight onto this fabric. With that fine nib. Don't want to go out of the Oh, a bit out of the lines there. I'm upside down colouring. <laughs> oh, that's it like that. So you can add colour like this, wherever you want. Then we've got, if you wanted to introduce some pink. You can just colour that straight on there. It's really, really relaxing. That's it like that. So wherever you want to pop the colour, you can do that. You get 20 different pens in that pack. These always sell out when they're on the show. They're really, really popular. Um, so if they're in your basket, please do check them out. A TNCG84. Did we have a message? Oh, we had a stock warning on the, the Ecru. So that's the, uh, the cream floral uh, premiere this morning. Have we got, how much stock do we have left of that? Ooh. Let's just check. Here it is. Let's have a look. It's just doing the maths. Um, so this is the uh, linen look. Oh, we've got five metres of this left, so only 10 units. Um, so this is a linen look fabric. It's brand new today. It's got a really lovely vintage floral look to it and um, with those dusty, uh, dusty pinks and those magenta pinks as well in the buds of the flowers. Also with some lilac and some gold. Just a really, it's a classic floral, very classic. This would make gorgeous cushions. So again, if that's in your basket, we can't guarantee that order until you've checked it out. So please do go process that all the way through to the end just to ensure that you've got it. Or you can give the call centre a ring. That's the best way to check stock levels. The number there is on your screens, 0800 112 4433. So that also comes in a dusty pink as well. I'll just show you that one while we're here. So that lovely um, sort of crushed raspberry colour you can just see in the background. Works beautifully with the, uh, with the cream as well. But if you wanted it on its own, then you can obviously do that too. So again, half the stock of this one has gone. So I'm not sure how many metres we've got left of that. Um, if this one's in your basket, we're okay on this one at the moment. So this is the crazy rush for cream. <laughs> but the, have I got, I've got pen on my hands. Too much colouring. And um, this is the, that lovely pink. Just 355 per half metre. So we've had a message in. Let's have a look. Um, let's see. 
it's coming, it's coming. I'll get that in a second. I think it might be about hot air balloon fabric. Okay, so we also have the white hot air balloons. I just showed you the, uh, the black. Let's look at that one again. Sorry, I do keep calling it white. It is ivory, the hot air balloons and the violins. Here it is, you can see it on white there now. So you've got those um, hot, that hot air balloon detail again. You can pop colour onto this white one if you want to. Um, obviously there's lots of different sections where you could apply the colour if you, if you wanted to do that. So we've had a message in. Hot air balloon fabric in ivory. Um, will it go with the black and white bundle? I've ordered the bundle and, will, hang on, let's start again. Hot air balloon fabric in ivory. Will it go with the black and white bundle? I've ordered the bundle and balloon fabric in both colours to make a quilt. Yes, so let's just grab that bundle. So if you, if the hot air balloon fabric here and the, all of these colours go, the only one I would say, in my personal opinion, that doesn't is the white because it's an ivory background fabric. So all of these greys do go, I can show you those there. So you've got your black, your charcoal, your slate grey, your glacier grey. It's just that crisp white, I, I think that stands out probably. This is more of an ivory colour. If we take the white away, all of those greys work as a monochrome collection. I hope that answers your question. We didn't have a name from who that was from. Just a J. Just a letter J. So, yeah, I hope that does answer your question. If you wanted to uh, team that bundle with the hot air balloons, that does work beautifully just without the white. Okay. Which one's low in stock now? Oh, this monochrome fabric bundle. We've only got two of these left. So if you do want this one as well to pair with that Michael Miller fabric, because that is white, all of those colours will work with that Michael Miller. If you do like that one, um, that's on the... It's just not on your screens. That will be coming up on your screens. <laughs> okay. So the most popular Michael Miller at the moment is the fish in black. So let's recap those. Fish in black. Here it is with some colour applied. So this fabric collection purposely designed to have to be coloured in. So you can keep it black and white, but if you want to um, to make it bright and vivid and colourful and bold, you can add those colours wherever you want to, um, wherever you want to add the detail, or just in one small section, fussy cut it, apply it to something. You can do that. You can see what it looks like here with the colour. And here with your black and white. All of the Michael Millers we've brought back today, but we've got low stock on these. We didn't plan on bringing them in. Producer Paul squidged them in because he thought, oh, we could do this with our textile markers because you can use them. They work really, they're designed for those pens. So this is Fish Frenzy on black. B-I-E-Q 68 is your item number for that one. And that's 845. But you also have the option um, to have this one in a white background. So this is white, it's not ivory. You can just see that difference there. I don't know if you can see on your screens, if I just show you, that's the difference between the ivory and the white. So it just gives you a bit of an idea that there, there is a difference in colour between those Michael Millers and the other fabrics. This one's your ivory and this one's white. This is very crisp. So this is your Fish Frenzy on white. So the design of this is, you know, is, is designed for colour. You could, you could put colour in the background, you can put colour um, in all of these sections. These are designed so they're to have those, to, have, to be coloured in. So these sections are slightly bigger than those hot air balloon ones. We just decided to add that detail to the hot air balloons this morning. Um, but these have got slightly bigger sections, so probably slightly easier to colour in. But you can just see if we have those black and whites next to each other as well, that they do work. And that splash of colour making a huge difference if you do want to add that. ZXEQ72 is for the Michael Miller Fish Frenzy on white. Now we've also got not just fish, but we've got two floral, uh, fantasy florals in Michael Miller as well. So these are like flower power, they're retro flowers um, with big florals that you could fussy cut really, really easily if you wanted to add a statement, um, a statement section to um, something you were creating. So the white one, first of all, this is your floral frenzy on white. You've got these big florals. You've also got your rings here and different sections within the stamens and the buds of the flowers themselves. VZEQ47. 
This is the Colour Me fabric. Okay, so we've had another message in from, let's just get rid of that, I can't see the iPad properly. From Sean from Hampshire. Morning, Sean. Um, so, hi, Amy. Why can't I order more than three units on the website anymore? Uh, okay, so just give us a call. It's a free phone number. They'll be able to add um, more units. That, that they are, The team behind the website are working on that at the moment. Um, so you're not going mad, but you can just give the call centre a ring 0800 112 4433. Um, they'll be able to add more, unit, more than three units to your basket for you. Thanks for messaging in, Sean. Pauline. Um, Hi, Pauline from Cork. Oh, I love Cork. Um, I love your top. What pattern did you use? And was it easy as I'm a total beginner? Yes, it, perfect timing. We're actually doing this in the next hour. This was made by Amanda Wyatt, who's um, created this blouse from the Great British Sewing Bee book that we've got in the 10 o'clock show. So Amanda will be showing you how to do this, how to create the darts, how to create um, the neckline as well, talking you through all of that in the next hour. So good spot, Pauline. And that's good, perfect timing. So you'll have to stay tuned. And we've also got uh, the fabric bundle if you like the fabric as well. I love being able to wear what our designers make. It's happening more and more. Nice different um, different tops and, and bags. Bit of a bag fiend. So we just had that floral fantasy. I'll finish with that one on black. Um, again, it's those big floral prints. You can team it with the white or on its own. Here it is. 8.45 per half metre. Lovely. Okay, so that's our Michael Millers. We also have these Mettler thread packs this morning. So we've got two different seasonal packs and they've got eight threads inside and they, you know, two, two, two different color combinations depending on what project you wanted to introduce them for. So first of all, we've got that, um, the autumn bundle here. This reminds me of lovely like Canadian maple trees with those gorgeous coppers, golden oranges and yellows. And these have got a silk finish to them, a really superior cotton. These are long stranded cotton, so they are, um, you know, a, a higher quality cotton. They don't break easily. They're nice and thick. They're um, very resistant. And they've also got a spring option, which works beautifully with those vintage floral launches we've had this morning. And also with the Michael Miller, because with the colouring, if you're colouring in, you can see these colours here. And just how those threads there team in with those colours that you've got in the felt tip pens. But this is the um, spring, this is the most popular one at the moment, probably because we are in more of a spring, a spring like time, aren't we more than we don't want to think about autumn yet. So you've got lovely bright yellows, pinks, oranges, lilacs, some soft greens and aquas in there as well. In that silky, silk cotton, and that's a 50 cotton. O-R-E-Q 95, and that's 12.95 again for that one. So remember, if you've got things in your baskets, you only pay one, um, one lot of P&P per day here at Sewing Quarter. That's quite unique to us. And um, so it's capped at midnight. It's added on right at the end of the day. So if you decide you want to add things in the next hour or later on in the show, you can do that and you won't be charged two lots of P&P. So it's only 2 95 So if you want something that perhaps is limited on stock, um, like we are now with that Accru uh, Linen Vintage Floral, you can add that now. And then if you want to perhaps make the blouse later, you can do that later. You won't be charged twice. So let's have a look at this monochrome quilting book again. If you've noticed the quilt behind me, this lovely cat quilt, this was made by Lucy Brennan using a pattern from this book and um, using those monochrome colours. Great for these hot air balloon and violin launches we've had in this hour this morning. You can just see that there. I don't know if we can look at it. Just using those different shades of the black and white. Dressing our set with all different, lovely, different, like different pictures. So you could use the hot air balloons for that. I think that would look really effective. I wonder if I can just hold that. Can I hold this on here? Can we do a, let's have a look what this would look like. So just introducing different um, fabrics to that. You could use the violins as well. All those, so that solid bundle, the greys and blacks. It has a very different feel to it if you start to introduce different ones. Or for the cat, you could even do, maybe not hot air balloons. I don't think I'd do hot air balloons for the cat, but you could use a solid. <laughs> um, so this black and white quilting book, focusing on monochrome, but also using splashes of colour in some elements of it. So perhaps to highlight um, the petals of a flower or in that starry lane quilt, just in part of the block using some yellows and reds. But lots of different monochrome ideas. 
So explore the world of quilting using black and white. Obviously your black and white is the, is the best way to um, create different depths within a quilt because you've got those darks and lights. But you can see the different ones in the contents page here. You've got the cat at play, you've got the night and day, the starry lane, the white birches. Then you've also got some other um, different quilting projects here that aren't full size quilts. So different uh, placemats for your table or a runner. So all of these showing you a, a, a placing diagram for all of your fabric so you know where to lay your lights and darks. Then you've got photography, step-by-step -step instructions, obviously all your lists of materials and everything you need. There it is, cat at play. You can see that there, that's been done in a different fabric to what Lucy's used. You could introduce these monochrome hot air balloons. There it is on the wall. And you've got your patterns there to cut out. Your night and day quill, again, just black and white. If you're after a monochrome look, then there's lots of fabric options this morning. I just want to move these so you can sort of see these with the, with the quilts. Lots of different options. Seeing here sort of how to do your layout. This is the white birches, which is the one on the front cover of the book. Really lovely. Sort of, um, that's, I don't know why that reminds me of Christmas. I think it's these white branches here. <laughs> DUMZ19 is your item number for this one. So this is where you can see they do put, you can introduce some color different splashes of colour. So perhaps if you have got those colouring, uh, the colour me fabrics from Michael Miller, you could just colour certain sections if you wanted to. Another one here with some colour just being introduced. And this star, uh, oh, this is a lovely one, the children's silhouette. I don't know if you can see there, um, a really lovely sort of figurines with a skipping rope and old fashioned, like a little, a little boy walking a dog. And that starry lane quilt that Lucy Brennan did the blocks for, which you can go back and watch if you want. That was from, I can tell you when that was, that was in July. What date are we on now? It was last Wednesday. So whichever date that was, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Lovely. So that's your quilting book in black and white. Just some inspiration, some ideas. Perhaps if you're looking at these fabrics this morning, you're not sure where you'd use them. You've got with the hot air balloons and the black and white violins, you could incorporate those into some of those quilting projects that are in this book. Now, the most popular fabric of the day so far is the, oh, it's not changed. It's that vintage floral on Ecru. So it's that linen look, um, that lovely cream background. There's not many left of this. We're very limited on stock. So if you've just tuned in, you might need to act quick. Um, so it's, it's got that lovely linen uh, look to it. It's a thicker cotton. It isn't linen. I must just emphasize that. But I don't know if you can see here just on the, uh, the selvage edge that it, it is a slightly different um, texture fabric to those to those uh, sort of regular, more silky cottons, but it does have that linen look to it. This one's going to sell out. Um, so it's just that classic vintage floral. Also, we've got that in a dusty rose if you want it in a different color combination. If this one's in your basket as well, you're gonna to have to check out on this one because people are going to miss out. It's not to apply any undue pressure, but just so you, just so you know the situation, I don't want anyone having to miss out. And I know we had that call in about people perhaps struggling to add more than three units to their basket. If that's the case, just give the call centre a ring. 3.55 per half metre of both of these. This is your pink one on the screens at the moment. YBJQ65. I really want to use this for a dressmaking demo. I really want to wear this fabric. <laughs> Talking of wearing, I'm wearing a blouse at the moment that Amanda Wyatt's made, so we're making this after the break. We're using um, a book from the Great British Sewing Bee, so it's from the third series. Lots of the garments that they made and for the challenges and that some of the contestants came up with. So we've got lots of different designs in there for even things like leather jackets, for skirts, for blouses, and also some um, men's uh, clothing and also children's clothing, some board shorts for children. So loads of different designs in that book. You also get a pattern wallet in there too. So we're doing that with Amanda um, at 10 o'clock. So in three minutes, 
So this hour, we've had those launches of those brand new fabrics, those vintage florals, the hot air balloons and our violins, and those textile markers we've got back in stock. So if you do want those, add those to your basket and check those out. Get colouring. It's really relaxing. I tell you what, I, I can carry on doing that now. I'll do it, do it during the break. We'll see you in three minutes to make this blouse. See you shortly. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. There are many different ways you can buy from us here at The Sewing Quarter. You can order from us by calling our free phone number at 0800 112 4433 and talk to the team at our UK based call centre. Alternatively, there are other ways you can buy from us. You can go online and shop through our website at www.sewingquarter.com. You can even watch the show there and shop as you go. You can check out as many times as you like throughout the day and only pay a small fee of £2.95 postage and packaging for the whole day. We also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all products excluding custom-cut fabric. Our friendly UK-based team will help guide you through every step. Join us at the quilting event of the year this summer. From the 10th to the 13th of August, we'll be at the Festival of Quilts at Birmingham NEC. Come to the Sewing Quarter Cafe where you can meet our presenters and enjoy a spot of English paper piecing with special guests, including talented quilter Joe Carter. And on Sunday the 13th of August, join me, John Scott, and designer Mandy Shaw at the Sewing Quarter Workshop. Learn how to make Mandy's red work Christmas decorations and take home a free iron-on pattern transfer to help you get started. If you fancy being part of the fun, head to www.thefestivalofquilts.co.uk and use the voucher code SEWQ17 for £2.50 off adult tickets and £1 off concessions. We hope to see you there. Make sure not to miss a very special show on Saturday the 29th of July. We'll be joined by the fabulous Anna Sanders from Fabric Guru's Alice Caroline, who specialise in producing seasonal Liberty London prints in stunning colourways. Back by popular demand, Anna returns to Sewing Quarter to show us some exciting kit ideas, perfect for anyone looking to spruce up their home decor or their wardrobe. Anna will be walking us through this unique Alice Caroline Sara tote bag kit, containing everything you need to be able to create your very own Liberty wearable work of art. She'll also be teaching us how to produce this beautiful butterfly flutter cushion, a wonderful project for someone looking to add a special spruce of liberty to their home. So join us and Anna Sanders on Saturday the 29th of July at 8am and 10am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Lots of messages in this morning asking about the blouse that I'm wearing. And this has actually been made by Amanda Wyatt. We're making it in this hour, so perfect timing. Um, we're going to show you exactly how to make certain elements of the blouse with the darts and also looking um, at the neckline and also how to perhaps apply those, to pop those buttons on as well. I'll give you a twirl so you can see. You've got buttons on the back here at the back. Buttons on the back at the back. Of course they're at the back. And then you've got this lovely detail at the front and um, just with the darts here which gives it some a really nice shape it's a nice feminine shape to that as well and just with those it's just a nice um sort of sleeveless blouse so perfect for the summer perfect if you're going on holiday so we're looking at the pattern for that that's in the great british sewing bee book that we've got in this hour as well so should we start with that should we look at the book Let's just quickly show you, um, this is the book that we're going to be working with in this hour. It's a really substantial book, lots of different projects in here. I've earmarked some to show you during this hour, but the blouse itself taken from this, so you've got your pattern in there as well. It's by Claire Louise Hardy, so if you watch The Great British Sewing Bee, she's the sewing producer on that. She's the one, you know, behind it with all the sewing ideas. I'll just show you here in the book. This is the blouse that we're making this morning. So all of your instructions there of how to make it. You get a whole wallet of um, patterns with this book for every single design in here. But lots of fantastic uh, dressmaking projects. Lovely uh, woven t-shirt there. 
and she's a unisex book so you've got lots of projects for men as well you've got children's projects i thought that was a really cute one the elephant ballerina look at those ears on that and the trunk i think that's lovely it's really cute and you've got some men's uh different men's projects as well you've got uh kilts you've got a leather jacket and this is the blouse i loved as well a vintage inspired blouse i really really love that that's gorgeous so AZSP76, this is a really substantial hardback book, lots of different projects in there. I'll show you some more as we get some more time during this hour. But I just wanted to show you it first so you know where the pattern comes from for this blouse. Now, the blouse itself, we've got four um, fabric options for making the blouse. So you're getting two metres of fabric in those bundles, a metre and a half of a pattern or of a, of a, of a print, and then half a metre of a solid to go with that. I'll start with the one I'm wearing. So this is a really lovely uh, butterfly print fabric here with that navy background, which you can see. And you're also introducing some powder blues, some aquas, some bright turquoises in florals and butterflies within the print of the fabric itself. So here it is, a metre and a half of this one. Now the book cover size is eight to 20. So you've got enough fabric here to make that in any of those sizes. And then you've also got here your spectrum solid to go with that, which you can use for the binding of the blouse and to trim it. Then you've also got your thread and you get six lovely sparkly buttons. I must show you these close up because I caught my eye this morning when um, Amanda came in with the blouse and I said, oh, can I wear it? But look on the background, they're in the back. They're really lovely um, sort of sparkly glittery buttons. So 30.45, that's the price for that bundle for the, uh, the blouse that I have on. If you want a different fabric option, we've got some other ones too. So this is more of a, um, more of a, a spring-like color bundle here with your corals and your whites and pinks. So again, it's a butterfly. Again, you've got a floral, those lovely little details of the wings. Perhaps a little bit more summery and teamed with this lovely coral. And then again, you've got those sparkly buttons and that thread that's been matched perfectly with that too. AHGC57 is your item number for that one. And that's 3045 as well. Then we've got two more options. The next one is use, these ones are using um, the linear look fabric. So those ones that have that, they look like they've got a linear texture to them. Um, they've also got a, a nice sheen to these fabrics. They've got sort of cross hatching detail. So they're not plain, they're not completely plain. If you look closely, they have got a little bit more to offer than that. Um, so this is that dusty pink. Oh, that would go beautifully with that vintage floral we just had in that last hour. And teamed there with a glacier gray. This is a more affordable bundle. You've got that nice uh, slate gray thread there and these pearly gray buttons as well. YBGC 98. Again, two meters of fabric there. The last bundle, this is the one that Amanda's going to be demonstrating with in this hour. So this is a red and blue, so more of a nautical sort of theme. So again, you've got that linear look fabric with that cross hatching in the red and then a solid navy. And your buttons and your navy thread. Jig, J-I-G-C-64 is your item number for that one. Again, 21.45. So let's get cracking with how we actually make the blouse. First of all, thank you, Amanda. Hello you again. saved me having to wear my own clothes today. I've just <laughs> come in and get delivered with things to wear. It's great. I love it. Super. <laughs> It does look good on you as it's well. It's lovely. It? It's really lovely. How did you find the pattern? How did you find the book? It's very simple. Really, really easy to sort of follow. Obviously, everything's geared up for the beginner, intermediate uh, sewer. But some of the, the items will sort of like, you know, take you right the way through your sewing journey. So, so you yeah. know, depending whereabouts you are, if you're a beginner or an intermediate or an advanced, there's yeah, different definitely. projects in there. A leather yeah. jacket, I don't imagine that's a beginner project. Mm, no, you're no. going to need a couple, <laughs> a couple of garments under yes, your belt for, for that so. one. Okay, so okay. Um, we are, I didn't show you actually, you actually, this is the pattern pack that you get with the book. It's a really lovely sort of um, wallet folder filled with all these patterns. You get, you get this with the book as well. And all of your patterns for all of the projects in there. They are. So yeah. how, did, how did you start this one? Okay, so you, you've got four bun pattern bundles, but it is really good rather than having to sort of like sort all the way through. In the top corner on both sides, okay, it actually tells you what is actually Which on ones? that sheet. Okay, so it's easy to sort of like locate. Okay. Now, because the patterns are all printed on top of one another, you will have to trace yes. them out. Okay, so that was something that I was going to go over with today. So 
when we trace out, obviously you can use sort of whatever paper that you've got to hand. Obviously we use sort of like largish sheets of paper in the studio. Not always evenly cut, as you can see. <laughs> okay. Now, when we say tracing, usually people tend to sort of think, well, you've got to put it on the top yep. to trace Get your it. Pencil. Okay. But the easiest way that we tend to teach is that you actually put your tracing paper underneath your pattern. Yep. Okay. And locate the pieces that you want. Now, I think the way I'm thinking that I would sort of kind of like scratch your head moment because I was like, oh, okay, where am I? <clears throat> is that I thought the colours would marry up, okay, to so each one product. item. Oh, yeah. That's what I would have assumed. But it's not. But it's not, okay. okay. So you do need to sort of actually sort of read which pieces there are. So for the sleeveless blouse that we're doing, the shell top, okay, we've got the purple back here, but it's in turquoise blue on there. Okay. okay so oh, so you're following was, what it says here. That's so right. In, in your, it's actually written... You follow that top. colour. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay. I'm with you. So, yeah. Good to I, know that in advance. Yeah, because I was sort of like looking for all the put and I was like, oh, I've got yeah. that, that, that. And it was like, oh, I'd no, have actually thought it would have all been yeah, one colour. Yeah, so it isn't on that one. So that was just um, one little confusing bit. So, yeah, we've literally got our piece of our pattern on top of the paper. Okay. And with a tracing wheel, you can just regular these... tracing paper. Yeah. Yeah. You could, if you. you I'm not sure, I haven't tried it. You could perhaps get away with using newspaper. Okay. Okay, but yeah. So tracing wheel, look at your, the size that you're wanting. So in the book, it does give the, the sizes where they're from. And then literally, you're just going to follow through the dotted lines and just trace. Put a little bit of pressure through them. And we can come down. So you're marking yeah. using the tracing wheel, wheel rather than that traditional what we you know you all assume just with pencils. Pencils and ruler. This is going to mark, mark it, it into it. Yeah. And then when you actually peel back, what you've got is a line of perforation. Don't, don't know how easy that is to it's see, but it, it's just up. it just marks straight through that. But we've got this wheel in the next hour. Um, but this here just marking that through. Can you see there? And it does really aid as well. It helps on the cutting because it's actually sort of perforated when you actually come to cut out. You just lean into it, it to sort of Yeah, nowhere. it really yeah. does actually sort of help. So by having the, the pattern on top of the paper and working around with your wheel, at least then you're not going to miss any sort of like little notches. So it's really important to put your notches in, to put the grain line in, centre back lines. How easy is it to do a notch with the wheel? Very easy. Literally just sort of push it forward, okay, and it will just make yeah. that indentation. To do things like your grain line, you can then use your ruler, your rule. I always get told off for calling it a ruler. Why? I thought it is a ruler. No, a ruler is somebody that rules the land. Oh. <laughs> and a rule is a measuring instrument. Really? You can't call this a ruler? They're not supposed to, no. I no, didn't know they're, that. They're rules. So we literally... There's rules about which rules, ruler you which, can which use. Which ruler yeah. you use. Okay, so just go through with your grain line. Any markings where you've got your centre back. So this is sort of like for a little notch. Again, you can put a cross in it. Okay, it's just really important that you always get all of the markings through. What does it matter if you're marking through those? Obviously, some of these patterns overlap. My fear would be once you've gone over one, does that make the other pattern sort of null and void? Not at all. It doesn't matter. Not at all. Not at all. Even um, when you're using like sort of regular commercial tissue papers, we would still do the same. Rather than cutting into a, a pattern, yeah. if it's a multi-sized one, we still tend to sort of trace out. And you just sort of think, oh, the tissue's just going to rip and be perfect. Yeah, but it, it doesn't. It, doesn't. it will stay intact. Yeah, it will stay all intact. Absolutely not a problem. I can't believe I'm about to share this with everyone, but I'm going to. So we um, uh, here at Sewing Quarter, we've got set a challenge of everyone has to make a block. We're going to make one big quilt everyone in the office and outside and um i thought right i'm gonna obviously we need to give this a go and i'm very much a beginner when it comes to all things sewing so i um got all the fabric decided what i wanted to do i was going to do a, a reverse applique um and and have and do an s and a q that was going to come through in the fabric so i cut it all out traced it all out blah blah, blah. the q is back, back to, to front, front. <laughs> so rather than it being a q with the tail that way the tail goes that way and i thought i can't do it all again so i'm just going to have to own it it's a design it was a feature, design feature. So design it's feature. an s and a backwards q I, I, well, I have to show you i have to bring it on and show you tomorrow very embarrassing but i am learning so what's the rule measure twice cut once absolutely that's, that's what i didn't do really is yeah to double check everything 
So when we then trace out, okay, what we tend to sort of, is, I think, is important. I think um, you sort of go, yeah, yeah, I'll remember what it is. Always write down, okay, what it is, um, what the size is, because obviously we do different sizes. So sort yeah. of from one year to the next, if you get it back out, you couldn't actually think, oh, what size did I actually sort of do? do? So actually write the size on. Um, I've put in sort of where you could, could go in on the, the fold as well, drawing your grain lines in that you can see. Um, and sometimes, again, with the commercial um, patterns, sometimes the, the abbreviations and the codes, it doesn't mean anything to you once you've actually sort of put it away. Yeah. So I actually tend to write on... In the, your plain English, what yeah, it would the be. the fabric that I'd be using. Yeah. So it may be sort of like, you know, the blue butterfly top, um, something like that, something that I know instantly... That you can recognise. ..that I could recognise when I get the pattern back out again. Are we done with this? Okay, so, so yeah, we're all done on that one. So I just wanted to go through those because yeah, I think no, sometimes absolutely. it's quite an important See, piece. See, patterns, I think, is, a, um, is useful, very useful. It's a little bit like a map, <laughs> but they never tend to fold back no, up again and put them back in. how it started. Okay, so... we're working so, with this red and uh, linear look fabric yeah, for the top in this hour. Okay, so obviously I have started prepping it. So it is really nice and basic and simple. We have the front... And the two backs. Yeah. Okay. The front was one piece, yes. Front's one piece. That is cut on the fold. So when you get your fabric, because it's um, the 45 inch, 112 centimetres, um, you can actually, depending on what size you're working, you can actually sort of save a little bit of fabric as well by taking one salvage edge and folding it, not just literally in half, but just folding it in three quarters. Oh, or, okay. Yeah, or folding that edge to use into the half, the, way to the, the edge. whole bit. Yeah, because you'll end up with a big wasted area. So if so to, for efficiency on your uh, fabrics, if you take the salvage edge in, you can get the front on that out, piece. Out and, then that, and then you have that excess strip, strip that you can use. Yeah. So, Good tip. Um, <laughs> and then we then sort of then can bring the other side in to cut the back. And that isn't on the, obviously, on the fold. That's going to be in two separate halves. To attach. OK. OK. So when we've got this through, I mean, it's actually sort of like pinned down onto with the pattern on top. OK, you've got the dart in the front. OK, yeah. and we need to transfer those markings. So what I always do is, once it's actually sort of pinned, I get a piece of the carbon paper. Oops. And obviously they come in different colours. So you've got your red, your yellow, your blue and your white. OK, so obviously pick something that you're going to be able to see. Um, wouldn't necessarily see the red on this. I think I used the navy blue. Okay. Fold to match in, the, 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 the binding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So fold in half. The pattern would still be on the top and it's still pinned. Slide that through, as I say, double sided, slide it through. And then where you've got your, your markings, you can go over with your tracing wheel and it will then just leave a oh, faint yeah. mark you of see where that the actual. So rather than getting a pen or anything out, you're just doing that with your carbon paper. Yeah. Um, traditionally, it always used to be sort of like putting your tailor tacks in, but life's too short sometimes <laughs> for too many tailor tacks. So literally, just once the pat when the, while the pattern's still on the fabric, you pop the carbon paper underneath and then just use your tracing wheel over that part of the pattern. That's right, dark. yeah. Obviously, if, you, if you're working with a thick fabric or wool, something that the carbon wouldn't transfer, then you're going to have to do your, yeah. your tailor tacks. Okay. So I've already done the one bus start. So last time I showed this, there was a few people said, oh, that's really clever. A different technique. Different, just a little different quirk of how I do it. So it's laid down flat. This is why I tend to use like long pins. And we work from the point and we just actually put the pins across. So inserting from one line to the other. So from bottom to top. Yeah, okay. Now, you can, as well, on the actual dart legs at the bottom, just put a little snip to those. And then that goes across. And then we actually pinch it together. Oh. So the pins stay in vertical, the, in horizontal. The, yeah. In the... yeah. Um, pinch together, and then you can swing them. And bring down and that way you'll get the pin coming directly across the back of the line and when through you, the front. When, so when you're pinning that there then you're going onto that carbon line, line. onto the bottom. Yeah. So because wow. you've had your, your, your pins going totally vertical across 
as we twist them to go horizontal along the line. They create a line. Yeah. And that way, you know, when you're stitching along that top line that you're getting the that, two that, dart legs yeah. exactly together. Yeah. Okay. Why did we trim just to be able to, you can lift it? Yeah, where sometimes some of the dart legs can be quite wide. And although these are wide pins, long pins, sometimes they're not quite long enough to get all the way across. And you are having to sort of just sort of go by eye. Mm. So by actually doing those little notches, you can just literally gives match you a those bit of freedom, up. Yeah. yeah, it just sort of gives you another guide to actually make sure that the dart, the guide, the dart legs match from the front to the point. Great. Okay. So once you've pinned. Okay, we then take it to the, the sewing machine and then we're going to sew from the dart leg, the open end to the point. Right. Okay. And we're going to come, you can, well, you can do different ways. And again, I tend to sort of like, not make it up as I go along, but I've just, used, over the years, I've learned different sort of techniques. So we start and a lot of um, books um, will tell you to actually sort of come straight off the end Leave some tails so you can actually dart, tie, tie a double knot and that way you won't get a bubble at the end of the dart, which is absolutely acceptable. What I tend to do is I will come off the, the, the point and then I will raise the press of foot and I pull forward just sort of about a centimetre and then slide it back and then actually um, stitch over the last sort of three stitches that I've done. So it's not back stitching, which is a no-no on darts. It's yeah. actually releasing all the bobbin underneath and then taking back, back over. over it. And that way you can snip right off at the point and you still don't get a bubble. Can you show us that? I certainly will. Okay. There is another way of doing darts and that's couture darts, but that could be for another sort of it's, session. It's so interesting, isn't it? The different techniques and, and just how, I don't know if you almost not figured it out for yourself, but you that's just how you've come to do them. And I guess that's how you probably always do darts now. But if you'd learned a different way, then you might have used a different technique. Yeah. And there are just different different ways there of doing no it. There is no right and wrong way. As long as you're getting the effect that you want at the end of the day, that's fine. Um, and as I say, it's just little tips um, that we always like, so as just like to share. So just taking the pins out as you get to them. Yeah. Okay. This is that end And then the end about. one, so just sometimes if you kind of like lose that point, what I do is slide the pin out and just take it across so I can still keep a visual so I can actually stitch a little bit closer before I actually then take the yeah. pin and remove out. So I'm stitched and I've actually come off of that now. So lift up, pull forward to release the threads and then take it back. Just tighten that up. So rather than back, back stitching, this way you're getting only two lots of thread rather That's than right. three. That's it. Yeah. Okay. And so it's just literally then sealed off the end. Okay. So you released it, you, you fed it back through, right. and then you went back over just, yeah. just forwards rather than going forwards backwards, back. backwards. Makes sense. Okay. And then we need to press. Okay. okay. I think... Did I oh, where's on? the mat gone? Oh, we lost our mat. Do we have an ironing mat anywhere? Da, da, da. We, we just need the ironing mat. We had it earlier. I don't know, we did have it earlier. It's gone walkabouts. Oh, there's one here, I think. Yep. Let me use this. Okay, so it's really <laughs> important when we're sort of uh, making garments or when we're sewing is always to press. Sometimes it can be a little bit tempting to sort of like go, oh, well, I'll do it to all at the on. end. Yeah, but it, it actually sort of will, what will make a difference at the end. Yeah to making it look like a really good finished piece. We've got the ham out. Okay, so yeah, we've got the ham. So to set in the dart, we always just press flat the way that we've actually sewn it. And then we use the ham and bus darts go down and that way it will just shape across the ham. So this is now so, starting to create that shape, that yeah. curve. If you didn't have a ham, what would you? How would you do this? Um, a rolled up towel. Okay. Rolled up towel works quite well. There we go. <laughs> Upstairs, they just said, "Could you use a gammon?" <laughs> <laughs> you could try you it. Could, you could. Don't know whether I'd want to eat it afterwards, but yeah. <laughs> I prefer my gammon cooked in Coca-Cola. Yes, which is someone else told me that that's really lovely. I've never tried that. Oh, it's fabulous. Is it? Yeah. That glazes it. Um, just boil it in, just roll a cola, just cheap roll a cola is absolutely fantastic. Really? Yeah, yeah. I guess it's that sweet, sugary yeah. sort of, yeah. Like okay, so, so we've got the dart in, okay. Now, because not everybody has got overlockers, 
okay? And it is also a really nice sort of like finishing technique anyway, especially when you've got such a simple sort of garment, it's nice to sort of just add little details, is to do some French seams. Yes. And that way, everything is contained within. You've got no sort of frilly raw edges at all that you need to sort of contain about. Um, and it just makes it really nice when you put it on. I was going to show that really so you can see where... So this was the dark we just finished, and then we were going to... We're just going to do now French seams. So this is the finished one here. So just creating that nice, neat finish. You can just see that that's encapsulating all of your raw edges. It just makes your work, then it can be inspected by the Great British Sewing Bee and it passes the test, doesn't it? Do you know it what I mean? It does, yeah. It keeps it all nice and tidy and neat. And, <laughs> and it is lovely. And it, it isn't that much more time consuming, to be honest. Um, they're just really lovely to do. Um, yeah, I really like them, especially when you're working with a sort of a fine fabric, anything it's like that. Um, it's just when you slip your, your garment on, you just think, it feels like yeah, nice really and, nice, really polished. Yeah. Okay, so I've already sort of prepared the one shoulder, the one side's done. So we put raw edges together and we actually then stitch um, six millimetres or a quarter inch away from the edge of the fabric. Okay. okay. To join those. To join those. Again, you then press flat. Then on the back, press again and roll the seam towards the back. Okay, so shoulder seams always go towards the back. And that way you'll get a nice crisp edge. Okay, okay. ready to stitch again. So we can pop a pin in and then I can do the side. So this is the book that we're working with. It's from the Great British Sewing Bee. It's from the third series. Um, you're getting all of, you get a lovely pattern pack with the book. It's a hardback book. So you've got this one here. This is the pattern pack. So um, this was what we, we folded out to get all of the pattern from for this blouse that we're working with and that I'm wearing this morning. This is the book itself. Loads of projects in here. Lots of inspiration, but you can see just working through with all different fabrics. So they look at different fabric areas, whether that's wool, leather, and um, cottons, stretch fabrics, and then giving you different, obviously you've got your judges there, but giving you different um, inspiration for different ideas for those different fabrics. So this is the blouse that we're working on this morning. I'll show you this picture here, which is the one I'm wearing, made by the lovely Amanda. But there's lots of different, uh, different items you could make in here. Trousers, lovely capri trousers. I think it's quite nice when you sort of, if you watch the show and you sort of go, oh, I remember, oh, I remember, that, remember that one. I remember that one. Or you, yeah, 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 you saw it at the time and you didn't, you couldn't get a pattern for it. Or nice dresses, a jumpsuit. Oh, that's perfect for holiday. So we've got all of those there. But yep, different fabrics. I see that working with wool. Lots of different options. And also all of your patterns in that one. So AZSP76 for this lovely hardback book. That's a nice coffee table book, isn't it? I always think a hardback book. Oh, yeah. Which is nice to have for a little, a little flick through right. with a cup of coffee. Um, so you saw Amanda using tracing paper just a second ago. We have got some tracing paper if you want to use that to use with the tracing wheel. So that one there on your screen from Millwald. £3.95 for that one. You get four colours in there. Red, yellow, blue and white. And that was 3 dollars Then you also saw um, Amanda using the hand there, that tailor's pressing hand, if you're using that to create darts, to create curves, um, really lovely, so you can iron straight over that to give you a bit of a curve. That one is £11. FSGQ19 is your item number for that one, and probably more effective than a gammon, <laughs> <laughs> as suggested by upstairs. Okay, so I'm just doing the French seams then. So, as I say, when you do a French seam, your first row of stitching, you put the wrong sides of the fabric together. Okay, so it's sometimes you think, oh, it's really wrong. I'm going to have a, an edge. Let's take those off. Okay, so just hold that up. Sorry. Okay, just so you can see. And it's always really another little tip. But because, you, again, you're coming through the curve and you've got a little bit of stretch, always pin the top and then pin the bottom rather than working from one end and keep on pinning because what you tend to find as you start pulling it 
you get a little bit of stretch and then the ends don't meet up and you think well I'm sure I cut it accurately and I've got yeah. like an overhang but if you actually pin the bottom and the underarm and then ease and stretch in it will match so absolutely can, if, perfectly. Even if the top has a bit of a curve yeah. you know that your tops and bottoms are going to yeah. meet. So with that we just if we miss if you miss that you started at the top wrong sides together of the fabric and you've just yeah. stitched um, a quarter of an inch quarter of an inch so on these machines what you can do you've actually got the um, the option of moving the needle position across so when it's set normally, okay, because it's got a swing of seven mil, okay, the actual stitch width is at 3.5, so that's dead in the middle. Then if you then move it across the needle position over to a six mil, if you then put the fabric along the edge of the presser foot, that will give you quarter. a perfect quarter inch. Okay, so at least then you're lining, you're lining your fabric up to something that's almost stationary, something that you can something keep your you eye can on. just keep, yeah, yeah. keep, keep, keep You should towards. never watch your needle, okay, when you're sewing, because you'll just get mesmerised and <laughs> go a little bit boss-eyed. Okay, so you're just matching up the edge of the presser foot. Yes, we don't want to be hypnotised by okay. the sewing machine. Again, then, I'm just going to pop and, if I can, just give that a little press again. Again, it's really important to do all these sort of pressing stages. I've pressed it flat. That just helps to sort of set in the stitches. And then if I just... How would you describe a French seam for someone that didn't know what that was? A French seam is where all the raw edges are encased within. So it's a double seam. It's stitched twice and all the raw edges are con concealed and you don't see them. They're actually concealed within the So it's about the hiding them away. Yeah. So then we're giving it a nice sharp edge. I wonder why it's called a French seam. It's Obviously, just that I'm, couture sort yeah, of finish. That fashion. Yeah. Quality. There we go. And then, because our seam allowances are one and a half centimetres or five eighths, that's where we've used the quarter inch or the six mil. Yeah. We're then going to use, again, a centimetre Whoops. So slightly bigger. Just slightly. So you can encapsulate that inside. Yeah. Okay. So again, I'm actually going to if I turn the machine on and off. It just resets itself. So this time the needles come back to the middle position at 3.5. And again, I'm just going to actually line up the side of the presser foot with the edge of the folded seam. And that will then give me, I know then that will give me a one centimetre or a three eighths seam allowance. It's actually really not a lot more work for the effects that it has, is it? You know, no, for, for you're gaining finish, a lot more yeah, than, than the effort it takes. Because if you're already going along all of that for the join anyway, basically all you've got to do is turn it inside out, press it and do it again. It's not, it's nothing, no. you know, too time consuming. There we go. And like I say, you've just got such a lovely, neat finish from within. So that's okay. all encapsulated there. Let's just see if we can do it on the close up. And just see that's all been hidden away. It's a nice, neat finish. Okay. okay. Right. So the next bit on the pattern, it gets you to do the back edge on the centre, okay, of where the button and the buttonholes are going to sit. And again, little tips that I usually get people to do, and they sort of think, oh, I don't, I'm sure I wouldn't have to do it. But it, again, it sometimes putting an extra little stage in will save you time Later in the long on. run. Yeah. So the, the pattern asks you to press under, again, a quarter inch, six millimetres from the first fold. So if, you, again, you're not too good at eye to actually sort of just fold it and press it under, I'm a big advocate of basting. So a basting stitch is a long stitch on the machine. It's not, you haven't got a hand do no. it. It's like a running stitch. But they will come out really nice and easy. So I've just set the, the thread the stitch length, sorry, to the longest that it'll go to, which is five millimetres on this one. And again, I've swung the needle position over to the six and just gone down with a long basting stitch all the way down. And that way it gives a little bit of support and you can just then fold over and press and to press that end. line. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if, you, if you're not confident doing that by eye, it just gives you that, you know that you've got it accurately yeah. in place. I mean, I can usually sort of 
when I'm sort of like measuring and people say, how do you know that's for, how do you know? Yeah. I'm like, well, because well, I'm doing it all the time yeah. and it can be spot on. But I will still do that because it just gives you such more of a sharper line. Once you've pressed that under, you then do, you've then got to fold it at one and a half centimetres or five eighths. But again, once that's pressed under from the first one, I've put another basting line in. Okay. So again, so you're going to get that fold there. That fold, Let's that just double show fold. You that one, so you can see. And it will actually pull out and come out really easy afterwards once we've got it all in place. So this there, that there is the one at five eighths, and this here was the quarter. No, th what was it? Three eighths. Quarter. Quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch. Yeah. yeah. So you can just see those two folds there and there. Okay. Why do you have to fold twice again? Okay. So again, the first fold is just literally to fold the raw edges in, and then. We fold again, just so that when we put the buttonholes in, you've got a little bit of support ah, yeah. through. You can, if you wish to, the, the pattern doesn't call for it, but you can, and I did sort of like wonder whether to put some in. You could actually put a strip of interfacing, just a lightweighted fusible interfacing, just along that one inch strip. Okay. Just to give it and that then, extra. Yeah, and that will just give it a little bit of support when you do put the, the button holes in and for the buttons to sort of sit on to make that placket. Okay, but as I said, the pattern doesn't call for it, but it is an option if you feel that you wanted to give it that little bit more. Okay. Okay. Again, on the basting line, just go back to that one, is you always then turn the thread tension down. Now, people just sort of go, oh, my tension's out and whatever. All machines have an automatic tension. Okay, and they're usually highlighted a little bit darker on the number scale. Okay, so you just leave it as it is. If you want to actually loosen it down, you go lower on the number. So we always turn ours down to a number two. Yeah. Okay, but then always then make sure return they it return to, it yeah. back. Okay. So why do, why do you do that? Again, it just helps it to pull out with, with the really, really it's making easy. it a basting stitch as opposed Post to the stitch, stitch that's going to be there and, and hard to pull yeah. out. So if you sort of like see that, you can see just how easy that is to pull out. Oh, yeah, through. you can just pull that straight. Okay but it will hold it into place. So I can do that that side. Mm -hmm. So are you just going to repeat this on this side now with the quarter inch and then again in at five eighths? That's right. Okay. And then we'll just then top stitch those into place and then we're ready to start putting the neck edge and the bindings in. Okay. okay. I might leave you to just do those two um, yeah, rows fine. of stitches. Maybe don't do the top stitching. We'll wait for that so we yep. can show you in a second. And I'll just show you the fabric options for this blouse. So if perhaps you um, you like the red or the blue, we've got some other different bundles you can use the blouse for. So let's just have a look at those. We'll leave them out of just doing those two rows. Yay. We're not allowed to fast forward. <laughs> John always tells me. <laughs> I know, you have to pause, pause. <laughs> don't sub anymore you have to stay where we are we don't want you to miss anything um so we've got four different bundles for this blouse and um, all of them come with two meters of fabric so you've got a meter and a half of one of the main patterned fabric and then half a meter of the other for the binding so we'll start with the one i'm wearing which is this lovely navy one and this is the most popular of the hour i'm pleased to hear that so um this is this has got some lovely butterfly and floral detail um, with powder blue turquoises as well and some soft greens so you've got a meter and a half of that blue butterfly and then you get half a meter of this um, really sort of bright aqua color there which you can use for the binding that's been paired with a thread and these glittery buttons that Amanda's about to show us how to do on that back placket so that's 3045 OCGC06 and that is the winner of the race at the moment that one's out in front but we have got more of a, a, a sort of a spring summary, more of a summary option, a lighter colour palette. Um, if you wanted to go for butterflies in more of a white and pink uh, sort of look. So this one introducing a coral, but also we've got a nice soft pink in here too. So it's, it's the same print, but same fabric, but in different colours. So again, a metre and a half of this. And then half a metre of that coral as well for your binding. You've got your thread there and a slightly deeper coral and again those lovely glittery buttons for the back 3045 ahgc 57 for that one too then our next one this is the one that amanda is demoing with at the moment so it's that lovely red with that cross hatching detail this is a really soft it's got a silky feel to this fabric and um, you can just see there it's got those sort of cross hatch lines on there just giving it a bit of depth it's a really bold red and making it slightly more nautical by pairing it with a navy. So half a metre of that solid navy. And again, your buttons and your thread completing that bundle. And this is a more affordable option as well at 2145 JIGC64. 
And our final bundle, if you want to go for greys and pinks, then you've got this really um, soft, dusty pink um, in with your main uh, linear look fabric, again, with that cross hatching. So a metre and a half of that one for the body of the blouse itself. That's got a nice sheen to it. Matches my nails perfectly. <laughs> and then you've got a half metre of this soft glacier grey for your binding. Again, paired with your thread and slightly different buttons in this bundle. You've got your grey ones there. So the coral blouse is 2145 YBGC98. Let's get back to Amanda. So we haven't got anywhere. We've I paused you. Know, I promise, I Perfect. promise. Thank you very much. Okay. We just don't want anyone to miss anything. So both of the sides now have got their turn over. Two turns. Turn turns, okay. And I'm just going to start to sort of set it up. So I'm going to stitch from the underneath. Again, we want the top stitching to come nice and close to the edge of that fold line. Okay. So you don't get anything um, flapping around inside. Again, what I'm tending to do is actually sort of find something that I can actually follow as a marker. So on my presser foot, I've got the metal silver edge where it, and then I've got a line where it goes into the perspex that I can see. So I'm actually going to use that line where it joins. Yeah. Probably the camera won't be able to sort of like pick no, that I up. No, I can see what you mean, but you just mean yeah. like where this... Just literally on that seam. Again, I'm then going to utilise the needle position, okay, that I can see that it's just going to fall in nicely. I've made sure that the ten thread tension is brought back up and we're going to top stitch. So a top stitch, I always tend to like to bring it up a little bit and just make it a little bit longer. So I'm going to bring that up to a 2.8 and just literally stitch all the way through nice and steady, making sure that our lines, and again, that's where it's really important and where the, it's really helped with the pressing. It just helps it to lie nice and crisp. Well, it doesn't, it's, you're place. not battling it, are you? It's lying right. nice and flat. It just goes straight through your machine. Does the pattern allow for that double fold in terms of the um, the original measurements? It does. Okay. Um, yeah, because it's using it's um, it's a bit of a pattern hack from one of the other blouses. So on the actual pattern, it has a centre line for the one blouse um, in the book, and then it has cut here for the button back blouse. Oh, okay, so, this so is... I actually sort of just trace a whole lot out and then just literally turned that piece under and cut it okay in. so at least then you haven't got to sort of like then trace another pattern if you don't wish to, if you want to sort of like make both of the blouses okay so then this one so the other blouse isn't a, a button back it's the same blouse but just without the buttons that's right yeah. it, it's um a simple but it's a very simple blouse yeah it's got a seam up the back and then a little keyhole opening side you know the um visaline bias tape that we used this morning mm -hmm. could you use that for this no i didn't um when i had all my briefs come through i sort of plowed on with the blouse first um and i didn't really sort of i'd sort of like i had a glance down of which, which products i'd got and i'd used pretty much most of them um but i thought well i'd sort of like actually sort of stick to what the book Sort of recommended yeah um but as i say as i sort of like start making it up i'd have thought yeah i could perhaps put some interfacing down this back button um and then when i was sort of like putting projects together for this morning's uh, session and then i thought right okay well i'll obviously use the top the, the pattern blouse to actually sort of demonstrate that bias tape that so that bias tape, tape you could introduce here and um, we used it didn't we earlier on the shoulder on the on sort of the armhole but also you could yeah. use it on the neck yeah, you, it definitely lends itself to the going through the neck. Okay, so that's all in place. Very smart. Okay. <laughs> Shall I just show you yeah. that? So you can okay, see. again, so another nice see. little press. Press, press, press. Press, 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 that's yeah. That's the moral of the story. You have to you press just all the way that. through. Okay, lovely. Okay, sorry. That's fine. And now we go buttons. You want to go buttons? I need to. I didn't bring the button holder, so if. Uh, is that, but that is where we would. This is where we would do. You can buttons. do the buttons now, or you could do them at the end. 
Okay. Um, in fact, I think I would, no, I'd go on to do the neck first before would the buttons. Yeah, because you've got to, once you then start to fold the neck facing down, you can then measure where your buttons are going to go to. Okay, But yeah, that. if uh, we've got time, no, I'm certainly fine. quite happy to do the buttonholes. No, you've got time. got 11 minutes to be precise. Alrighty ho. <laughs> so we're going to cut then the bias trim. So the navy fabric. See, this one didn't have a, hasn't got a, um, it's on the inside, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be trim. on the inside. So you can do, you can do either. You can do it so it actually sort of like peeks Shows out. Them, yeah, if you wanted to. So you've got your half metre. Okay. You're barely going to use any of this, I wouldn't think, are you? When you cut on the bias, it does... Use that quite a lot of fabric. Yeah, sort of gobble quite a lot of <laughs> Gobble. Good word. That reminds me of it's turkeys. A... <laughs> why, does the, why does the word gobble remind me of turkey? Okay, so to cut the bias, it's got to go through the 45 degree. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, we So do. we work from the salvage edge. We know that is a 90 degree line. So we're then going to take that through. Okay. So we fold once, so this is the bias one that we want to do. We can, if we've got a longer piece, we can then actually sort of fold it again. Okay. Number eight. And then with the cutting mat, utilise the lines on the grid. And because we've got that fold, we need to just get rid of that fold. So I'm just going to overhang the fabric over one of the lines on the grid. Using the ruler so you're matching, so you know that you're going to get a good straight line going through. Ease that back a little bit. And the rotary blade. Always cutting away. Okay. And then we're then going to cut our bias strip. So the rule of thumb is whatever width that you want it to finish, double it. Okay. Yeah. But in the bias maker tapes, it sort of tells you how, how, much. how wide. So if you want to, to end it. up with half an inch, yeah. so you do an inch of. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to push that up so I can see. Remember, make sure that the this edge of nice the fabric... This is nice because you finish with those diagonal ends as well for your bias. Make it, yeah. Maker. Okay, so I'm just going to take it sort of a sixteenth wider. Rebel. <laughs> there we go. And then we can do one more if we <laughs> just... Is when you sort of start cutting these, you know, you look, you can make your bias tape in that way. You're always going to be ready. You know, you can have it sort of sat in your stash there, ready to go. go. While you're yeah. cutting, you might as well do it. That, yeah, you can do while you're lined up. Some and... more. Oops. On that one. Okay, and there we go. So that will be ample to go through the neck Let's edge. Move this. Okay. Like so as you can see, as you've cut through, you've used yeah, you use a, a fairly fair, large section. Fair amount. Okay. But again, using, working from that side, it does help to not sort of go right through the centre of it. Then you can use that fleece embroidery with your scraps and make something. And make more fabric. <laughs> yeah. Make new fabric. <laughs> okay, so we're then going to we can measure it through. It should be the one piece long enough to go around without joining. But if you did have to join it... Oh, that colour it, actually looks really nice. I only when I, th I was I said, didn't I, I thought... I don't know about red and navy, but it actually looks really smart. It does. I haven't seen them next to each other like that. Okay, so there we go then. So the bias maker. Good old okay. gadget. So You have to have that diagonal point at the bottom, don't you, to feed yeah. it through. Then that just gets fed through. So if you haven't seen this before, this is a really quick way to make your um, bias binding. You just feed that through, through. and then it's okay. folding it for you. Yeah, just rolls it through. And you, press as, you press as you go. And we press as we go. So it's so important to always have your iron on. And then just literally sit the iron behind it and just gently pull. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's just folding in those two sides to create your bias binding. So that was an inch strip, wasn't it? It was, so or a, just a generous inch. Yeah. So I always keep the iron quite close to the mouth of the bias maker. Just to keep it nice and tight, right. otherwise I think it can yeah. start to undo, can't it, as it, you go through? Yeah. So we've got about six or seven minutes. Okay. 
So this one's 10.95, and this is creating, um, a, is, this is for a 12 millimeter um, bias tape, if you wanted to make those for your, um, for edging. Um, GPGQ98 is your item number for that one. Okay, so again, I'm gonna put a row of basting stitch around a quarter of an inch away. So that's my two. <laughs> there we go. Is this Try. for you to follow as a guide? Yeah, what it is, is I'll use this basting stitch, as you say, for a guide. So the raw edge of one of the folds on the bias will sit along this line. when I'm going over the shoulder seams. Oh, so you go right just, round to the back, right, to the right open round. back. Yeah, start it at the back, go this all the way around. This is why we didn't do the buttons at yeah. that point. <laughs> okay, so you've just then got a marker. And then we're going to use, so the two folded edges, you've got a nice crease along there. That. You can just see there where that's been pressed in. So rather than like that, then you can start to open this out. Okay. okay, and I'm then going to start the one side at the back, a little bit of an overhang, okay, and I'm just going to then line up the raw edge with that basting line, just putting a couple of pins in, and what we're going to do then is then stitch in that crease line. So that's where we make our attachment on yeah. the side. So I. I personally wouldn't necessarily pin all the way around. You may feel happier to, to do, do so. Um, but because it's on the bias, it's going to stretch and it will grow. Um, so it's just as easy to actually lie it in place and you can it'll bend <laughs> with you. So again, I'm going to take that over to my quarter inch point. So the bundle that Amanda's working with at the moment is the red blouse bundle. So that's um, paired with that lovely smart navy, JIGC64. You get a metre and a half of your red fabric, half a metre of your navy that you can use to create that bias um, bias tape for the edging. So we're using this round the neck at the moment. So that's the bundle there. And it also comes with your buttons and your thread. So everything you need there to make the blouse, you just need to add the uh, pattern from the book and a sewing machine, of course. <laughs> yeah, and, and some time. So a couple of a couple of expensive things in the sewing machine at the time. Oh, I always find time. If I don't sew within a day. Do you get... sew every single day? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I get a bit angsty if I don't. Bit fidgety. Yeah. If I don't sort of get my chance to have my fix. Do you get a chance to do many personal projects still, or do you find it's sewing for for myself? Yeah. Um, not as much as I I would like to. Um, but I don't ever buy clothes. I always make every piece Do of, you? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I so admire that. So uh, I think Simon, my business partner, would be contrary to sort of saying that I don't. Uh, he's like, you're making something else again for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> do you see, do, how do you work in terms of making clothes for yourself? Do you see clothes that you like and then you try and imitate those or do you, do you work from patterns or do you? both really um it's a little bit like the chicken the, the egg sort of syndrome it's um obviously i'm always buying fabric um sort of uh, obviously wholesale that we sort of like because we supply um and so a lot of the times fabric sort of speaks to me and i can just literally, see something yeah and sort of think yeah that's definitely blouse skirt jacket trousers whatever um sometimes then i will sort of there'll be a pattern that I really like or it's something that's on trend that I'll sort of go with so it works in both both ways really. You, you, we wouldn't be finding you in a shopping centre buying clothes? The only time that I go and I have is just literally to go and have a look what's... To see what's there? Yeah and then go oh, I could make that. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it better than that and have the satisfaction of knowing I made it. It's different yeah. Okay so that's in place. Oh here it is. Okay. I've only got about so a minute and a half one left. Bit. Okay now mm -hmm. you can Understitch if you wish to at this point. 
Okay, so under stitching is where all of the seams come towards the outer edge and you stitch about two millimetres away from the seam line. And what that does, it helps to then flip that. It keeps everything sort of in place and it helps to sort of make it sit nice and flat okay. on the inside. It's not essential, but you can do it. I would then trim away the excess of the red neck. Is that just to reduce any bulk? Yeah, and to sort of prevent anything from sort of poking from underneath the blue bias. Would you leave that basting stitch in as well that you did to act as a guide? It'll, well, you, you're cutting right onto it, so some of it will come, we'll out, just anyway. come out anyway. Yeah. Okay, so we do that. And um, by reducing it down as well, it'll help it to turn and it'll save you putting the little notches in, you know, when you go around a corner. You to clip it. And you have to clip, yeah. And it, because it's so narrow now that it's just down to a quarter of an inch, um, you really don't need to, to worry about having to do clips. We've actually run out of time. Oh, I know. Shame. So we get so we, we, we've covered a lot though. You managed to do the darts and the French seam, and then we got onto the neck as well. So just to finish this off, you would cut all the way round, and right. then, as you said, you would just stitch that, and then flip that round. That. Yeah, and then you'd have like a nice top stitch. So you could do it in a navy blue cotton if you wanted to, so it would like yeah. sort of stand out. That's the one in the red, actually. Yeah, um, or you could do it in the red, so it would blend in. Okay, you just have that little line of. Piece there lovely there. perfect right. oh thanks amanda i've had You're a welcome. lovely morning learning all about visaline and also with it well managed to get a blouse out of it so that <laughs> can never be a bad thing can it <laughs> um so we're just going to have a look at those books and those fabric bundles for that but thank you very much amanda i'll see you, you in a minute um so let's see what we've got over here so four different options for the blouse itself. So if you like the cut of the blouse and you want it in a different fabric, perhaps to the one I'm wearing, we've got some options for that. So first of all was the red one that Amanda's been working with. So that's that lovely uh, linear look fabric. It's got that sheen to it. It's got that cross hatching detail. You get a meter and a half of that one. And then that binding that Amanda was just doing using that tape maker was in the navy. So we obviously cut that on the bias and that's why you've got half a meter of that one. And you get your thread and your buttons with that as well. And that's $21.45 for that bundle. Then you also have an option to do that in a coral bundle. So you've got um, a really soft, I, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call this coral. I think I would call this a soft pink, like a ba very soft baby pink. And it's teamed with a glassier grey. So you've got that there for your binding, this for the main body of the blouse itself. That would be a really feminine option. And that's teamed with a darker grey thread and some grey buttons, $21.45. So those are your more affordable options. Then if you wanted to go for a, a slightly busier design, like the blouse I'm wearing, this navy uh, butterfly fabric, you get a metre and a half of that. That's enough to make the blouse in any of the sizes, 8 to 20, that are in the book that we've got this morning. So you've got a metre and a half here of that navy with your blues and turquoises. And then half a metre of that bright aqua for the binding. And your glittery buttons and thread too with that one. Um, OCGC06, is that one still the most popular? It is still the most popular. So if you have got those in your baskets, please do check that out. We're limited on stock on that one now. It's been the most popular uh, bundle in this hour for the blouse. Then finally, you've got a more um, a springy, spring summer like um, option for that butterfly. This is, this is a coral that you've got here in that binding, that coral thread, and then that white, pink and coral patterned fabric for the body of the blouse itself. AHGC57, and that's 3045. Now, you saw Amanda using some tracing paper and um, when she was uh, transferring that pattern. So we've got some of that for you if you'd like to add that to your basket. You get four different colours in that packet. £3.95 for the tracing paper. So you can use that to mark WZGQ61, £3.95. And then Amanda also used that pressing ham, so perfect for creating those um, lovely curves if you're, if, you know, if you're putting in a dart, it helps to create that feminine curve to it. So that's the Taylor's pressing ham that you can iron straight onto, FSGQ19. Also, you can use that with your darts to um, sort of bang the fabric. To sort of, it's obviously got quite a lot of weight to it. You can use that to really, I don't want to say attack, but to really uh, sort, of, sort of give the fabric a, a hit and to move it and to manipulate it into place. Now, we've been working with the Great British Sewing Bee book this morning. That's where the pattern came from. And we've got two other sewing bee books, just if you like those two. And um, one is from the winner of series two. So you've got that one here from Matt. Uh, that's about make it, mend it, love it. So doing repairs um, if you want to, you know, upcycle things or if you want to fix hems and, and to fix any, uh, any little things that have gone wrong. So he's the winner of series two. That's his book there. 
And then this is the other Great British Sewing Bee Book. You've got your two judges there on the front. That one as well is available today if you love your Great British Sewing Bee. We're hoping for a fourth series, but we're not sure. Fingers crossed. EUSP91, and that's by for the Great British Sewing Bee Book. So our next hour is all about tools. We've got loads of different tools. Um, we've got some fantastic things for pressing, for marking fabrics. We've got water pens. We've got uh, fabric markers, lots of different things. So I'm going to be showing you those, talking you through them, hopefully to make your life in the workroom a little bit easier. I'll see you in three minutes. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our sewing quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Did you know, there are multiple ways you can contact us, even if it's just to ask a question. Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at sewingquarter.com, visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter, and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. So I'm going to be showing you how to do an ease stitch. Um, it's very similar to our running stitch here, um, but the purpose of it would be different. So I've kind of mocked uh, the head of a sleeve here. Nine times out of ten you will have to ease the top section of your sleeve. So this is the stitch that you would do that with if you were going to do it with hand. So I'm going to use the embroidery thread. I've just popped a knot on the end again just so it doesn't pull through. Normally you wouldn't do it with um, embroidery thread. So on your sleeve, normally these sections will need to be kept as they are because it's only this section here that we need to be working with. So I'm going to be doing a running stitch quite close to the edge of the fabric. I'm just going to do the quick method here where you're pulling the needle through the fabric while keeping it on the same needle. So I'm going to stop there and then pull that all the way through like so. So you can see that I've got just that section sewn there and then as I begin to pull you can see that I'm easing the head of my sleeve in. So when that is stitched these curves should disappear, they shouldn't be there because you've eased the bigger section into a smaller section on the clothing. So that's easing. Sewing Quarter is at the very heart of sewing as we bring you all things sewing and quilting. The team behind us live and breathe sewing day to day. We strive to bring you exclusive offers, exciting live demonstrations and most importantly, we will custom cut fabric to your specification in our very own cutting room. We will also be bringing you TV exclusives that you won't be able to find anywhere else. So come and join us today at the Sewing Quarter. Welcome to the Sewing Quarter! final hour here this morning at Sewing Quarter. I'm Amy Burrows. We've been making some gorgeous, this lovely blouse that Amanda just made in that last hour. And in uh, and earlier this morning as well, we were looking at lots of different Visaline products and some launch of some premier fabrics that we've had brand new here today on the show. So in this hour, this is all about tools and gadgets, handy things to hopefully make your life a little bit easier, maybe things that you might not have heard of before or that you didn't even know existed that you can just use to, um, to mark your fabrics, to pin them, to glue them, to hold things in place. So I'm going to talk you through some different products that you might like and that you might hopefully love. So I'm going to start with, have we got the um, water for the glue pen? I don't know whether, yes, we've got some. Let's see here. So... Let me just see whether we've got our, where is it? So first of all, this is a glue pen that you can use to um, 
this isn't this isn't actually glue sorry this is a water pen and um, so what, what you do with this is you pop water into the main body of the pen itself and you can use this to mark up fabrics so that you can then um, iron along those lines you can use them for creases if you're marking up a hem um, so I'm going to show you first of all if you imagine this was empty so let me just empty this first of all so it's almost a little bit like an injection, actually. You just squeeze the water out of there. But if you wanted to pop the water in, so this is empty at the moment. I don't know if you can just see that here. This is where the water is going into there. So you pop that into the water, just suck the water back up into the pen itself. Then you screw that back on. You get three refills in here. So let's just shake the excess water off of that. So the water is going to feed through the nib of the pen itself, then you can use this to draw onto your fabric. So if you can see this, this is actually a very dark fabric. This is a light, you might be able to see it um, more easily on a lighter fabric. I don't know if you can see that line. But you can just see that line there. And then when you can, you can use that line to then crease things. So if you wanted to iron over that line, then you can use that as a marker. Have we got any lighter fabric at all? No, we need like a light blue or something like that so you can really see how this works. But once that water line is on there, you can use that as, as a mark. So you've got a visual aid for folding um, or perhaps if you want to, you know, you want to pin somewhere or you know you want to put something in a certain area of your garment, you could just mark here. You can see a little bit there. I don't know if we can get a lighter fabric so I can show you. But this has other uses as well. So you can pop stain remover in this main body of the pen itself. So when you're injecting the water, sort of sucking that water back up into the uh, body of the pen, you could put some stain remover in it. So imagining that there was a small stain on here, you could just rub the water out of the nib with the stain remover. And just in a really small concentrated area, you could help to remove that stain. So perhaps, I don't know if it was on a tie or something small like that, and you just, you don't want to, to spread the stain remover everywhere. You can just concentrate that in one tiny area like that. You can see that there like that. So you get three refills of this uh, sort of nib section you can see here. This is how the pen will come. So you've got those three there, and then you've got your um, the actual body of the pen itself. Obviously, you can use those to mark measurements as well. So if you want to use it against a ruler, you can mark those different points along there on the grid lines. YXPH16, and that's 1095. I don't know if, when we, if we can get a lighter fabric, just so I can show you so you can really see how that works. That's on roots, it's on roots. So um, let's move that cup of water. That's not for me to drink, that's for, um, for the pen. And um, so you can also get refills for that. So perhaps if you already have the pen, um, these are the uh, little sort of nibs that, that fit into that top part of the pen where the water will feed through. There are your refill tips there, 245. UJPH25 is your item number for that one. Okay, so what should we do next? Let's look at this thread magic. So this is a premiere. We've never had this on the show before. And this is a thread conditioner. So if you're wondering what that is, this is, it's, I, I, you probably, I said, can we open this so I can show you? So let me just show you the packet first of all. This is all about um, helping create less thread drag and also um, strengthening the thread and conditioning it. So you're preventing tangling, you're preventing fraying. You can see there, 400% less thread drag. So you're adding that conditioner to the thread itself. It's, it's safe for all your threads and fabrics. And it's really going to help to prevent a uh, sort of tangling and fraying. Let me just open it so you can see inside. So you place this under the thread, um, you place the thread on top and then you just run the thread through the conditioner. So you can see it's sort of got these grooves on the side here. Almost looks a bit like a lip balm, <laughs> but you can, I won't be doing that, but you can just see those little grooves where you could slip the, you could sort of um, notch the cotton across. And then you just pull that thread over the top of the uh, conditioner. You can do it for your bobbins as well. So you don't have to handle the thread as much. You can just pull it across. It's also safe for all of your machines, so you don't have to worry about it leaving any residue. And it's giving it sort of longevity to your threads. Also eliminating any static. So you know sometimes you get those uh, small uh, little bits of thread. You know, if it's hard to pop the thread through the eye of a needle where the end's starting to split or fray, this is going to really help keep those threads nice and tight together. And um, have we got any thread? 
know if we've got any. But um, you just you just pop that across the uh, the main body of the conditioner itself, not over the lip balm, and then you can condition your thread that way. But this is brand new. We've never had this on the show before. It's the Thread Magic Round FPEQ34. Magic. <laughs> So that's brand new today. So I wanted to show you that first. Let's just click that back on. Okay. So this is just the packet once more, just so you can see what that looks like. Oh, here it is. It's a picture for your screens. There it is. Also, it's a hypoallergenic formula, so it's nothing that's going to leave any residue that you um, that you might have any sort of reaction to. Let's just show you that. I've got some thread. So literally just placing your thread over the conditioner and just pulling it through. They're just waiting, they wanted to want to close up. Just conditioning that thread there like that. Pulling it through your conditioner. But really useful, you can see there for the end, just keeping it nice and tight together. FPEQ34 for your magic round, thread magic. Now, we've got some lighter fabric back. I'm just going to quickly show you how this glue, this um, water pen worked. So you, this was the pen where you suck the water up into the main body of the pen. This was how it worked on the fabric itself. You can just see their marking lines. So if you want to mark something out or if you've got a ruler that you want to uh, put a marking on. If you want to let more water out, there's a little, uh, sort of button on the side so you can just leave a little bit more water but obviously that's going to dry so it's not going to leave anything uh, long term on your fabric. This is also really handy for um, water erasable pens if you've marked your fabric up perhaps you've drawn in your darts or you've drawn in any, any sort of marking notches or anything you could use this to come in and just to rub that pen out so you can just come straight in with the water and just pop that on there and rub the um, water straight onto the pen and that will erase that for you. Lovely. So if you're watching in that last hour, we were making this blouse with Amanda from the Great British Sewing Bee book. Um, she used a tracing wheel. So when you're transferring your pattern, rather than that traditional method of laying your tracing paper over the top of the pattern and then having to, you know, maybe struggle to see the pattern through it and to trace on, the tracing wheel is all about making an imprint. So you put the pattern over the tracing paper so you can still visually see that pattern and then you can mark with the wheel. It leaves an indentation um, on the pattern itself so you've got those folds there and you can use that as a guide. So this is the tracing wheel you can see here. It's a nice smooth wheel. So that's just going to run really smoothly. You're not going to miss any part of the pattern. It's going to follow all of those different, uh, perhaps intricate or, fit or fiddly uh, curves and lines. It's a nice ergonomic design. So you've got a handle there that's really comfortable. It's got a recess sort of, um, so you can fit your fingers really easily around that. It's going to be nice and comfortable too. 425, that's the smooth tracing wheel. BJPH63. Of course, just it's like a conveyor belt of accessories today. So next up, we've got these weights from Prim. They were actually more heavy than I expect. They're actually quite weighty um, than I expected. So these come in two different colour options. They're telling me I should do bicep curls with the with the weights. There they go. So these are our Prim weights that you can use if you're dressmaking. These are to keep your uh, your pattern weighted down. So perhaps if you're still doing one part, transferring patterns from one area, and you want to keep one area weighted down, then these are perfect for that. These are the weights themselves. We've got some open here. So these are 104 grams, so they're quite weighty and they're 100% cotton. They're filled here. You can just see you've got those, they're almost like little mini stress balls, but they're fixing weights. So you can just place these, drop them onto your pattern and to hold things in place. So if you wanted to weight that down, They've also, the, the fabric itself um, has got sort of a soft grip to it, so they're not going to slip and slide all over your fabric. And they're three centimetres in diameter. You can drop those there. So those are your blue ones. You might be able to see these ones sneaking in here. You've also got them in pink if you prefer that in a different colour option. Or perhaps you want to um, have those, perhaps you want those uh, just in a different colour way. And um, if you're working with a different colour fabric and you want some for the corners and some for um, um, the middle part of the design and you wanted different colours, then these are a pink set of fixing weights. UIPH83. So those are our weights. I feel like you should be playing a game with those. Like, I 
can't juggle. If, if only I could juggle, how impressive would that be with the, I, I would give it a go, but that's just gonna end disastrously. I won't, I shan't be doing that. Okay, so um, next up we have got the, where have they gone, the pins. So we've got three different pin options in this hour. Um, the, the difference being the different head types that are on the pins themselves. So these ones here are red glass headed pins. Obviously the main thing about a glass headed pin is that it's heat resistant. So if you're uh, working with the iron and you, uh, you know, the iron's gonna come into contact with these, they're not going to melt the uh, head of the pin itself. Obviously being red, they're going to uh, stand out. They're gonna be visually obvious when you're working with them, which is good because we don't want any pins in places where they're not meant to be. These are super fine pins and you can see that glass red head there. You get 35 pins in this prim set, MHPH06 and they are 795. The next set of pins, we've got a wheel of pins. So these are pearl headed pins. So these are just really um, easily accessible. They've been arranged in a pin wheel. So you can see all of those different pins around the edges and um, different colors, perhaps if you're marking different areas of, if you're marking up a pattern, if you're dressmaking, then you could use different pins for different parts. But really easy, just an easily accessible way to get those 40 pins in and out of the pin wheel. Only 145 for those 38 millimeter pins. And then we've got dressmaking pins. So you can see these ones here, these are much smaller. These have got a flat head, so they've got no uh, sort of big ball on the end of the pin itself. These are nice and flat. So if you've got lots of pins, perhaps if you're uh, tacking, if you're pinning a, a hem and you want to, the pins to be nice and discreet, these are your dressmaking pins. You've got 380 in there, so lots of pins. <laughs> 295. So CBGQ94 is your item number for those dressmaking pins. Okay. So we will be bringing back, by my request, the uh, pin, the magnetic pin cushion. So if you didn't see it yesterday, it was really, really popular on yesterday's show. And I asked if we could sneak it in again today just because I, I know how much you loved it. And lots of feedback on how effective it is. It's all the cylindrical uh, pin cushion that's a magnet. So it's a really strong magnet. Great for hoovering up pins that have ended up all over your desk or all over the floor or even in the bottom of your bag. So um, it's, it's a really, really strong magnet and a great way of keeping your pins in one place. I'll show you that in a little bit. So we've also got uh, fabric markers. So we've got, uh, these are pencil fabric markers. So they've got three different color options here for these, a blue, a white, and a pink, obviously depending on what color fabric you're marking up. There's a little brush on the bottom, which will brush, brush away the uh, pencil residue. And obviously these are just sharper than chalk might be. So if you need that precision and accuracy, by sharpening a pencil, you've got a nice uh, fine nib there for marking uh, the, perhaps the more intricate and tricky parts. EDGQ65, only 195 for those. Talking of markers, we've also got the uh, glue marker here. So this is, this is really popular. Lucy uses this a lot, Lucy Brennan, for English paper piecing. This is a yellow glue. So it dries clear, it dries, uh, it's transparent, but it is yellow when you apply it. And you've got that glue marker there just in a, in a nice sort of pen form. 395. Also great for just holding things in place if you're not, uh, if you know if something's not, if you've not finished a project and you want to hold things, trimmings or little small uh, notions in place, you can use that for that. And there's a refill for that as well. So this is where you can really see the color. It is a bright yellow. That's your refill. Perhaps if you've already used the pen and you've done lots of foundation paper piecing um, and you need to refill it, this is almost like an ink cartridge, but just a glue refill for the pen itself. 195, okay. More markings, we've also got chalk markings. So we've got two different options for marking with chalk. Obviously that's the more traditional way to mark up uh, with Taylor's chalk. And um, we've got that in a stick form and also in a mouse. So let's look at the mouse first of all. This is a nice comfy way to sit in your hand. Um, again, that nice ergonomic design. You've got the chalk in the top of the uh, wheel itself here. And then you can use that to mark your fabric. It's also got this, this little teardrop part here is a window. It's a chalk indicator. So you can see how much chalk you've got left in there. And obviously the benefit of chalk is that it just brushes away. It's not going to leave any permanent mark on there. So that's the chalk wheel, the mouse wheel, 595. Or you've got a stick. So here it is. You've got that, love, uh, that chalk in a different form there. So holding that more like a pen. 
again with your white chalk in the top, 545 for the stick chalk wheel, CPP H39. So two different options, you can see those there, um, just you know, different in terms of how you handle them. Lovely. I've got my pincushion. I've got the magnetic pincushion. This is what I wanted to show you again. If you didn't see it yesterday, or if you did, and perhaps you just want to see it again, this is a, um, a really great way of hoovering up your pins. So first of all, this is the magnet itself. It's a really, really strong magnet, really effective. Um, it's an, you can see again, that's from Prim there. So imagining, oh, I'm attached. <laughs> imagining that your pins were scattered all over the table, like this, then you can just hoover these up it's a really strong magnet in one go. So just picking them up really quickly and easily. Or you can do that from above as well. Let's just clear those off there again. <laughs> this sold incredibly well yesterday. It was really, really popular. If you wanted to just grab them up in one go, here we go. There it is. Let me just show you again. £4.45 for this, so it's a great value as well. Perhaps as well, if you're, um, I, I said yesterday, if you're working at your machine and you're taking pins out as you feed something through the machine and you, you've had it pinned, you don't have to worry about, I'm just conscious I pricked my finger, you don't have to worry about um, placing the pin onto the pincushion. You know, obviously with a, a traditional pincushion, you've got to actually place that in there. With this, you can just throw it towards the pincushion and the magnet will draw it towards it. So if I just show you there, you can just head it in that direction and it's a really powerful magnet just throwing that towards the pincushion and then hoovering up any that are left on your workstation or on the floor. Some of those flat headed pins as well, like this one, like those dressmaking pins, they're quite tricky to, they can be quite fiddly to, to pick up. If you've got, obviously if you've got a head on it, it's slightly easier. But with the magnet, you can just pick that straight up really quickly and simply. So we've actually got limited stock on these as they were so popular yesterday. I did sneak them back in. Um, XCPH79 for that magnetic pincushion. One more go, let me just show you. I also discovered, I've now um, got one of these for my dressing room. You can use this for hair grips, which I always find all over the floor. So again, it's, they're magnetic, so you can use those to, um, to pick up hair grips as well. Okay. Just like a game. Perfect. Lovely, congratulations if you got one of those yesterday. I hope you're as pleased with it as I am. I'm re I really do, I'm chuffed with that. I think it's a, I think it's a really grab, great, pro I'm gonna say great, a great uh, product. So we've also got Wonder Clips. So we've got, if you don't like working with pins and you want something else to work with, the Wonder Clip is just a really easy way of obviously keeping your fabrics together. The lovely thing about Wonder Clips, obviously they're really visual, they're really easy to see. They're um, perhaps, you know, if you struggle working with pins, these are slightly easier. You've got that spring there. Also, they are flat on one side and that curve on the top. So this enables them to slide through your fabric. So you can slide them off as you're working through the machine. Let me show you that on some fabric here. So if you pin this, if you, if you clip it, sorry, onto the fabric, obviously it's really visually obvious, but because it's on the, because of that flat back, you can just slide it. So if you were feeding this through your machine, with pin, obviously you'd have to pull it out. With this, you can just slide it back. You're sliding it, sliding it, sliding it back and take it off that way. So you get 10 in here. These are really small wonder clips. So perfect for those more fiddly and intricate projects. VKGQ56 uh, is your item number for that one. Lots of our designers like these. Also, you've got a marking on here for your seam allowance. I don't know if you can just see here that little line, but you can just use those to help you guide that through your machine as well. 7.95. I keep seeing flashes of that butterfly top. This is the blouse that Amanda made in that last hour from that great British sewing bee book. So we've also got a seam unpicker, which might seem like something that you probably, you might think oh, I've already got one of those. Everybody has one of those, but this is a really a great seam ripper. You've got a, a nice ball point on the, um, on, the, on the metal part of the ripper itself, but this just glides through the fabric. It's like knife through, hot, uh, through butter. It's really, you know, it's, it's really, really a hot knife through butter. It really does just slip through your fabric. Great for unpicking those stitches. You've got that lid here as well, so that you can place that on the top as a safety cap, or, and then once you've used it, you can put it on the bottom, so just making it slightly longer and easier to hold in your hand. You've also got a little hole there so you can thread a string through it and hang it around your neck. $4.95 for that stitch ripper there. 
Okay. Now, what would tools be without some fabric to do things with them? We've got some fabrics to show you in this hour. These are from Art Gallery. These are um, a denim look fabric, but they're 100% cotton. Let's go and have a look at those. Lots of different options in this collection. The lovely thing about these is that they look like denim. Obviously, denim's always on trend. It's always fashionable, but they're much more breathable because they are cotton. So particularly in the summer, if you want something, you want to keep it lightweight, but you still want to maintain that denim look, then this is a really great way. It's a compromise. You get to keep it nice and breathable. So we've got 10 different art gallery um, prints here. So let's start with this one at the bottom. So this one almost looks stitched. It's got lines through it in teardrop shapes um, in sort of a very soft pale blue. The background in that classic denim colour. So this one is called Casted Loops. 11.45 per half metre. All of these fabrics from Art Gallery are cut off the bolt for you so you can have as much or as little as you want. Actually, this blouse that, I've, that we've made would be really lovely in one of these fabrics. So our next one is a floral. So this one is almost looks like it's been painted on. It's got those dappled petals on it um, in blues, in mints and in pinks as well. So you can just see that here with that denim background, but you're maintaining that softness of cotton. It's not rigid, it's not heavy, it's going to be easy to work with. Some people are put off working with denim because they're a bit scared of putting it through their machine. Um, you don't need to change your needle. You can work with this as you would with any other normal cotton. This is the painterly wash. You could even use this for a project for the garden, perhaps garden cushions, a kneeling pad, that nice summery feel. XDHN15, 11.45 per half metre. Next up, this is a lighter denim. So this one here isn't patterned, it's, um, it's a much uh, softer blue. Um, it's, you can just see there that slight difference in colour, but you've still got that denim look to it, you've still got that grain giving it that denim um, effect. So this is the solid smooth denim fabric. You can see that cross hatching there, 12.45 per half meter, BSHN29. This one would be nice to pair with one of the other fabrics because it is a slightly lighter color. So if you wanted to say pair that with your painterly wash, you could, those work really well together because it's a slightly different color denim in that uh, solid one there. So you just look at those as a pair. Okay, then we go to our lovely polka dot. These are a nice big cross hatched polka dot. So these almost look like um, gauze. They've got that sort of gauze effect to them. Let me open this out a bit. Again, on that dark navy. Pointel rings, so it almost looks stitched. Obviously, pointel is a type of stitch. You can just see that there. It's, oh, it has a bit of a 3D effect actually with the uh, denim peeping through underneath that white. 11.45 per half metre again of this one, PZHN96. Next one, next one. So this one here, we've got diamonds. So you've got lots of different, I'm gonna open this out so you can see some more of the diamonds. You've got some different patterns within the, uh, the windows themselves, almost like a stained glass window, but in a denim, a denim look. So again, that nice classic navy, but you've got that like a sort of a cut crystal there. You've got a floral. And you've also got um, a sort of a stamp effect as well. So that's the Diamond Art Cuet Art Gallery. So many fabrics in this collection. This one, but I've got two close, close favourites. This is one of them. This is the Daisy Print Art Gallery. So this is a really lovely summery fabric. I think this is really, again, this would be really gorgeous for dressmaking, for a blouse, for perhaps um, a jacket, or for a summer bag. Always a bag. Ragged Daisies, 11.45 per half metre, XKHN18. Obviously, you've got that yellow and that white in that classic daisy chain. Next one. Oh, I haven't seen this one before. Oh, wow. Let's open this one out a bit. So this one here, you've got a nice big flower, but it's wo woven through with some other stitch detail. This is producer Paul's favorite. This is the Stitch Ochi Denim Print Fabric. In fact, I think I might have that upside down. Let me turn it. <laughs> I think the flowers should go that way. They should be going upwards. Yeah, that's better. 
11.45 again per half metre. Then this is my other favourite. I really, really like this one. So because you've got a nice mint green introduced here in the, um, in the stem of the flower and then some nice white swirls on the uh, rosebud. Rosebud's Falling, this one's called. Um, on again, that lovely classic denim navy. 11.45 per half metre, HAHN64. And the last one is another uh, plain denim. This is a slightly different colour. If I put these next to each other, you'll be able to see the colour difference. I'll show you this new one first. This is more of a, um, this is called indigo. It's more of a, of a grey denim, actually. It's not such a bright blue. So this one here is your indigo shadow solid smooth denim. But it is a cotton, it's not a denim, so it's nice and soft and breathable. 12.45 per half metre, FVHN48. Let me just show you those two colours next to each other so you can see the difference. This was your other solid one. So this one here is the indigo that I've just shown you, and the one on the other side of your screens is the lighter one. They work well together, actually, as a pair. Lovely. So lots of different uh, denim, lots of different denim options there for you. Obviously much lighter than a denim, not as heavy, easier to work with and perfect for the summer because it's not going to be so bulky and so hot. So, oh, we've had a picture sent in. I love this. I think, oh, the system's gone quite slow apparently. So it's from Julianne. I hope you're still watching, Julianne. Have you, did you send it, in the, uh, sent it in earlier? Obviously, let's have a look. We've just got it through now. Let's see. Oh, using the textile markers. Oh, that's fab. I love it. Obviously, and it's a bag, which I always love. That looks brilliant, doesn't it? Oh, fantastic. So thank you so much for sending that in, Julianne. I know you sent that in earlier this morning, so I hope you're still watching and you've managed to see it on your TV. I love seeing your pictures. Send them into studio at sewingquarter.com and we can share them. And so we had those textile markers this morning at nine o'clock. It's a pack of 20 textile markers, lots of different bright colors that you can use to color in your fabrics. So we had Michael Miller, Color Me Fabric. It's really mindful, it's a zen thing to do. You can color straight onto the fabric itself. And we also had that in that premiere um, hot air balloon and violin prints as well. You get 20 different colors. You get a dual nib, so you've got a nice fine nib for the um, more intricate fiddly parts and a thicker nib as well on the other end. A whole rainbow of assorted colors and you can use them for labeling. So if you don't want to um, sew in name tags, you can just write the names in with these felt tip pens and you can make things like Julianne did. Um, TNCG84, they're always really popular. We've just got them back in stock. So if you do like those or you missed out on them before, they're 12 95 you can add those to your basket. Okay, now the most popular thing at the moment, which is, is it, the, please tell me it's the pincushion. Yes, it's the pincushion. I'm so pleased I managed to get this back in today. I love it when a plan comes together. So um, I requested to sneak this back in because everybody loved it yesterday. It was really, really popular. It's, if we just pop these pins on the table, this is just all about making your life easier. Fiddly pins, difficult to pick up, particularly those dressmaking pins without a head on them. This here is a really strong magnet from Prim. It just hoovers them up. Picks them all up really quickly and easily in one place. Perhaps if you've dropped them on the floor, they're sometimes difficult to see. You might not be able to see one if it's not got a bright plastic or a glass head on it. And this is, you know, in terms of safety, this is a great way of checking that floor, checking your workstation for pins that you might not have noticed. Again, you can almost aim the pin, throw the pin towards the pin cushion as you're pulling them out of something, as you're feeding it through the machine. It's just going to be attracted to that magnet rather than hitting the table. Again, I can't pick that up. It just hits the pincushion itself and sticks on there. Just picks them all up with that nice strong magnet. 445, XCP879. If you want that, you will need to buy that now. Get that one today because I've only just, I just about managed to sneak that back into today's show. 445. The next most popular thing is the glue marker. So let me know what you use these for. I think English paper piecing is the most, most common thing that this is used for. It's a glue pen, so you can just use it to um, fix things into place, to hold things in place. Um, it does wash out, and it's a yellow glue inside there. So it's nice and visible, nice and easy to see. Obviously just in a pen form. 
it's the aqua glue marker isph28 if you've already got it you might be able to see that refill sneaking in here here it is that nice bright yellow again so you can just pop that inside the pen so the actual pen itself doesn't have to be replaced you can just pop in for 145 you can pop in that refill 90 sorry 195 the next most popular thing is the thread conditioner. Let's line these up in, in order of popularity. So we had the uh, pin cushion, we had the glue marker and the refill. Next up is the thread, um, the magic thread conditioner. So this is a premiere, we've never had this on before. Where's the packet gone so I can show you? Oh, so you can see this here on an image. So this is about conditioning and strengthening your threads. It almost looks like a lip balm, but you just push the thread through it and it's preventing tangling and fraying. Um, it's not going to, as you can see there, it isn't going to melt or freeze and it's safe for all of your uh, threads and fabrics. You can use it for bobbins, you can use it for hand sewing. And it's just eliminating static as well. So let me show you how you use that. It arrives to you like this. As I said, it's in a little pot, nice little handy pot. You can pop that into your sewing kit with your thread magic. When you take the lid off, you can see inside that thread conditioner there, it's got a nice sort of uh, sheen to it. It looks a little bit like a, like a glue stick. And those notches at the side enabling you to just pull the thread through. Let me show you with some thread. So you might think, why would I condition my thread? Obviously it's just going to um, help with the longevity of it. It's going to help maintain the thread long-term. If you spent a lot of time investing um, in a quilt, you know, spending lots of time making a quilt or a project that you want to stand the test of time, this is just helping that thread to last as well. Let's just pull that back that way. So we can, it's making it uh, more durable, also preventing fraying. And lovely as well, what's great about it is when you get to the ends, where you would, might struggle to thread that through the eye of a needle, it's just preventing and uh, reducing that static there. So you can just pop the end into the magic round. <laughs> and you can just feed that much more readily through, I don't know if you can see it more easily there, through your, the eye of your needle. FPEQ34, brand new, the magic round. Next most popular thing, I've got to keep my train of, train of products. Okay, so next up is the chalk wheels. So there are two different options for chalk wheels. Obviously this is for, particularly for dressmaking. Um, Taylor's chalk is the most traditional way of marking up your fabrics. So we've got this in two forms, whether you use that as a stick or a mouse. Um, we've got less stock of the stick, so I'll show you that one first. So this almost this would fit into your hand as a pen would. It's a chalk stick there, a nice ergonomic handle. So easily it fits easily into your hand with that sort of recessed shape to fit around the curve of your fingers. You can see that chalk at the top. I don't know if we've got one of these open. Oh, we have. Even better. So you can see here. Oh, is this yes? That there, your chalk wheel in here. And then, let me just grab the fabric. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't lift it from under the heavy, heavy weights. <laughs> so you use this to, you can just mark straight onto your fabric with this. You're marking your lines on there. Really easy to see. Oh, that's a really satisfying noise. I like that. We can do noughts and crosses. Here we go. Who gets to go first? I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna go, you have to go for corner, don't you? That's what I got told. He wants to go top, top left, but is that here? This is my bottom, bottom left. Oh, I've done too many. Oh no, I've done it wrong. Anyway, you get the idea. This is how you mark up the fabric. I probably shouldn't just be playing noughts and crosses with it, but a really easy way then, and then you can just rub this off as well. So it's not gonna leave any residue on your fabric. So you've also got the option to use that in a mouse. Here it is. Let's pop the lid back on there. I love the noise of that really satisfying have we got an open mouse no we don't so this one here again is, is a similar thing but just in a teardrop shape so it fits um fits into your hand it's slightly smaller your wheel mouse jdph54 okay now the fabric from nine o'clock this morning, I'm going to recap those now. These were premieres that we didn't, we have never had them on the show before. So they're brand new ones that you won't have seen before. Have we got those here? They're 
on, set over here. Yay, as if by magic. We've got a new floor manager, Adam, and he's literally so, he's really on the ball. They're already all set and ready to go. So thank you, Adam. Um, so we've got these lovely new fabrics. I'm guessing the fact we've not got the accrue here, did it sell out? Yes, it's gone. It's already sold out. So um, we've got a really gorgeous, this was my favourite one. This is a vintage floral. It's only 3.55 per half metre. It's 100% um, it's a, it's a cotton, but it's a linen look and it's a thicker, it's a slightly different weave. It's not your traditional cotton. It's a nice thick fabric there, so a bit more durable. I'd really suggest checking out your baskets on this because it's been really popular this morning. Let me open this one out. I really like this. It's really, really nice feminine fabric. I really want to do, so I want something made out of this to wear. <laughs> so you've got those lovely flowers, lots of um, detail in your petals, obviously in the buds of the flowers. A vintagey floral there with your greens and some purples and yellows coming through as well. YB JQ 65. Act quick if you want that one because that looks like that's going to sell out too. So please do check out your baskets. Okay. Then we also had some monochrome fabrics. So these are in black and ivory. And the most popular one was the, which one was it? Black air balloons. So we had hot air balloons this morning. Just over half the stock of this um, is left. So if you do want this one, you can still add units to your basket. Um, it's a lovely design. You've got that black and ivory. You can see there the detail in the hot air balloons themselves. And we got the coloring pens out. You can use those textile markers to color in this fabric if you want to. Inject a splash of color. It's got a nice floaty feel to it, hasn't it? Those hot air balloons. 3.55 per half meter, brand new on the show today. Now we've also got that in ivory. So just reversing the colours there. So the hot air balloons are in black. The background fabric is in the ivory. Again, 100% cotton. VNJQ34. 3.55 per half metre of that one with your clouds as well. Okay. Then we've also got um, violins. So these again come in black and ivory. So I'll start with the black. For someone musical, you could make a tie or a shirt out of this. I think that would be great, particularly this black one. Um, so you could use these again, if uh, musical inspired products and um, projects, perhaps a cover for a music book, a cover for a music stand, um, a bag to take to music classes, perhaps if you've got a young music protege in your family. <laughs> so this is the cotton print violins on black. 3.55 per half metre. TEJQ01 for that one. And we have that in ivory too. So you can see there, and that slightly lighter option with the uh, ivory background of the fabric and the printed violins in black. Again, 100% cotton, nice and soft. YSJQ19 for your ivory violins. Okay, so we've had a message in from Diana. Good morning, Diana. Thanks for messaging in. What would we like to see? The, so we'd like to see the plain denims. Of course we can do that for you. Let me do that now. So we have these um, art gallery denims. I'll start by showing you these plain ones that Diana, you'd like to see. So Indigo first, which is the slightly darker option. Let me show you how this, um, so this is a half metre. This is one unit. So you can see that there. It's got that nice um, sort of linear detail to it, as you would expect in a denim. It gives it that denim look, that denim um, sort of feel. So that's the shadow solid smooth denim. And we've also got it in a lighter blue. I think this is really nice for, you could pair this, uh, particularly this lighter one. If you introduce a solid, perhaps a white or something nice and uh, spring-like, I think this has got a really nice summery feel to it. This is a metre of this one. You could do dungarees, some nice summery dungarees. Nice for children, actually, if you wanted to keep something a bit more lightweight than summery. So that's the lighter one for you, Diana. The nice two solid denims there. Um, so this is called Afternoon Sale Solid Smooth. 12.45 per half metre. BSHN29. Lovely. Okay, let me just fold this back up. 
like thick. Lovely, lovely. I'm going, can I take my vintagey one with me? This is my favourite. It's like I just keep, keep my favourite one, let's take it with me. Okay, so over back on the other side, um, we've been looking at all these different tools, but we've also got a really, really handy little pocket guide here. So this is perfect for taking with you, perhaps, you know, if you're going to have a bit of spare time on a journey somewhere, on a train or a plane, or perhaps if you're waiting to pick someone up in the car. Um, this is a really lovely book you can just pop in your handbag, and it's all about different sewing supplies. So it's got lots of different tips in here. It's your handy pocket guide. So you can see there, lots of different nuggets of information on notions, um, on tools and materials. Let's have a little look at that. Perhaps if you're introducing someone to sewing, this would be a nice little insight into different things you can do. So introducing you to your machine. This is a bit of a stocking filler. I hate to say it, I know we've done Christmas in July, but this is a lovely little stocking filler. Talking you through your different feet. All of your different feet there. Then you've got your cutting tools. So perhaps if you're not familiar with any of these and you're not sure what you would use them for. Your marking tools. So there's that pressing hand we were talking about with your pressing tools here. Um, and these marking tools we've been looking at this morning with the chalk and with the uh, water markers. Different sewing machine needles. Straight pins, so we've had those different pins talking you through those different heads as well as the pins themselves. You've got details on threads. Elastic. Lots of different, just lots of different information. One tiny little book, so it's going to stop you from being stumped by any of those sewing dilemmas. You can tuck it in your bag, take it with you maybe even to classes or perhaps if you're going to an exhibition. But lots of information on, on batting, on stuffing, on fabrics, on interfacing. A really handy guide just to take on the go. Lovely, only five ninety five as well. So um, V F. <laughs> <laughs> the letters all got jumbled up in my head then. VFSP81, and that's 5.95. Like my backwards cue, if you missed earlier, we, I was saying that here at Sewing Quarter, we all had to create a block. We're making one big quilt with everyone um, in the office and in the buying team and everything like that. And um, I decided to do a reverse applique, and I'm, I am a beginner when it comes to all things sewing, and I did an S and a Q. And I bought some really lovely fabric that had all uh, sewing notions on it. It's got sewing machines. And um, I went round to my nans to use her machine and I cut the queue out back to front but it had taken me so long to get to that point and serve it all into place that I've had to leave it I've got a back to front queue I'll have to upload it to um, social media so you can see that was a that was not well you learn don't you live and learn you have to check everything twice that's my lesson so that's the a handy sewing book there that you can see on your screens at the moment and then we're looking at all of these different tools that you could incorporate into your workroom. So still in the lead is the pin cushion. So this is brought back from yesterday. We had it on yesterday's show. And I, um, well, I asked if we could bring it back as it was so popular and we still had a few left in stock. But these are really flying out now. We we're very limited on stock today with this one this morning um, as it is such a popular tool. If you've not seen this before, you won't look back. Scatter your pins all over your workstation. And this is just going to hoover them up. It really, really does. Just do, you can do it from above. Super quick in one go, just down like that. I've left one, that little one there that's going to be, doesn't want to be picked up. I can pick him up. Don't you worry. Here we come with the magnet. There it is. <laughs> and you can use that for hair grips as well if you want to, but perfect for pins, perfect as well if you're pulling your uh, pins out of the uh, out of your fabric as you're feeding it through the machine, you can just aim the pin towards the um, the magnet itself and drop it towards it and that will the, the, obviously that will attract it and it will stick to the pin cushion like this. Have we got a close up. <laughs> we need to see it. you need to see it in action. Here it goes. Just just drops. you can sort of head it towards and rather than it falling onto the table, that's going to land on your pin cushion. XZPH79. And if you're after any pins to go on that cushion, there are three different options. These red headed glass pins are really popular. Obviously, the glass headed pins don't melt, they're heat resistant, so they're perfect if you're working with the iron, particularly for dressmaking if you're doing lots of pressing um, with different seams and hems. The red, nice and visible as well, so you've got that in your fabric. You get 35 pins in this little box from Prim, $7.95. And they're 40 millimetres. So 
MHPH06. There's also um, a pin round. These are pearl headed pins. So um, again, just a nice visual way and, and easy, easily accessible um, in that pinwheel formation. Lots of different colors there as well. These are really affordable, £1.45. And your final pin option is the dressmaking pins. Loads and loads of pins in here. I think it's 385 or 365, one for every day of the year. We're just checking that. So um, these are much, these are your smaller pins, um, really sort of perfect for dressmaking. 380, I was nearly right. <laughs> 295 for those ones. That magnet, I reckon you could stick all of those on there. I'm not gonna open them and tip a hole with 380 magnets, but I'm pretty sure that that magnet would attract all of those. So let's have a look back at those denims again because they've already been quite popular in this hour. They're from Art Gallery. They're denim print fabrics, so they're breathable cottons. They're not heavy denims. They're going to be easy to work with. You don't have to worry about changing the foot on your machine. You can just work that through with your normal, uh, your normal foot and it's nice and simple and straightforward. So let's look at those. The most popular is the diamonds. So let's look at that to start with then. Let's open that one out. So this is almost like a stained glass window. You've got lots of, you've got nice little detail peeping through in the uh, diamonds of the denim. You've got a floral, a cut crystal, and sort of a stamp effect in one of those as well. So you can just see that's your floral one there. If I move this up, let me try and do a dance with the fabric. You've got your cut crystal there. And then just to the side of that, you can see that mottled sort of a dabbed stamp effect with your squares as well. 11.45 per half metre. This here is a metre of fabric, so this is two units. And if you've never bought fabric from Sewing Quarter before, um, or perhaps you've never bought fabric that's cut to measure, so we cut this off the bolt for you, and we send these in lovely Sewing Quarter uh, packaging. They're in a really nice uh, Sewing Quarter box that's got all of our branding on the top, and inside you'll find that it's all wrapped in tissue paper with a nice little Sewing Quarter sticker. So that nice, it's a nice little delivery, a present to you. We might have one of those. In fact, Lots of, we get lots of comments on our boxes, lots of people commenting on the packaging and how lovely it is to just have that arrive like a present from us to you. So um, if you are buying fabric cut to measure like this diamonds from Art Gallery, um, that would come in a box like that. Next most popular is the casted loops. So this is again a new one that I hadn't seen before. So you've got that lovely uh, sort of teardrop shape in a loop. It looks like a stitch effect actually in this denim. So you can just see those there. Like drops all, droplets all down the fabric. Casted loops denim print, again from Art Gallery, 11.45 per half metre of this. IQ HN39 is your item number for that one. Okay. And then my favourite fabrics today, we've had some premieres, some brand new fabrics. I'll take these back to the other side so we can do those over there. Okay, so my favourite, favourite one. We sold out of the accrue of the, uh, the cream one, but we've got this lovely um, dusty pink version of it, which is a vintage floral. This one was actually my favourite. I, pr I prefer this to the cream just because I think it's a really, it's a lovely, um, a lovely feminine fabric. Stocks are very limited on this now, but you've got that nice um, crushed raspberry uh, blossom in the, in the petal of the flower. And then you've got your greens, you've got your creams as well, and some purples coming through too. This is a linen look fabric. If you look really closely, you can see that cross hatch detail. I don't know if we can, is it possible to look any closer at all? You can just see that um, it does have a linen look to it. It's a different weave to those normal cottons, so it is slightly thicker. It's more durable. Yes, there you go. You can start to see there that it is a thicker fabric. 355 per half metre. On the, back, on the pink background there. Um, YBJQ65, if that's in your basket, please just check it out. I don't want you to miss out on that one. So, back to our Thread Magic, another premiere today. We've had loads of new things, I think, because we had the sale, I think we've now got lots of exciting new um, products and fabrics as well. So it's great to have some nice new stuff to show you. This is Thread Magic. We've never had this on before. This is a thread conditioner. So this is all about conditioning those threads. It's strengthening them, giving them some um, longevity so they're going to last longer and stand the test of time. Also helping to prevent tangling helping to stop it fraying at the end of the thread so it's easier for threading through the eye of the needle. 
This is safe for all your threads and fabrics. It's hypoallergenic, so you can use it if you've got you know, any allergies, you don't have to worry about having a reaction to that. It comes in this little pot. You might be thinking, what's this? It's just this, this, this is all it is. It's like a, it almost looks like a little um, makeup, doesn't it? You take that lid off there and you can see it's just going to feed the thread through there. You can use these grooves to guide the thread through. Let me show you that with some thread. I'm going to cut this piece of thread off because it's now been conditioned probably enough to stand to last a lifetime. I've put that through the thread magic lots of times. Let's break that off. Okay. So we're just going to pop this over the top of the uh, thread magic round. And you can just pull it over it. So you place this on here like this. And then we're just going to pull the thread through that conditioner. And it's just strengthening it giving it that coating so it's going to really last. And if you just get that end bit there, just want to make sure that's conditioned, then you can use, that's much easier to thread through the eye of a needle. It's going to stop your fraying. And then you just pop your lid back on. So, that is FPEQ34845 for that little thread magic. And it's going to, well, it's magic for your thread. <laughs> okay, so next up we have got the, do we want to look at the chalk wheels? Oh, the stick, this is low in stock, the chalk stick. So this is the one that I started doing noughts and crosses with and I drew too many boxes. But let's have a look if I turn this fabric over, we'll try again. So again, if you're, um, if you're using Taylor's chalk, you can mark straight onto your fabric. Obviously, it's the traditional way of marking up your fabrics if you want to mark notches or perhaps, um, you know, at certain seams or anything where you need to make a mark on your fabric. This makes a really satisfying noise as well as you roll it over the fabric. So it just, you can go straight on with your stick. You can see that nice visual line. Let's actually get this right this time if we were doing noughts and crosses. So you can just mark this here. Oh, I smudged it. I'm, so that was a producer Paul wanted to go here. I'm going to go, oh, the, cir the circle's a bit more tricky to do. <laughs> here? Oh no, is he gonna win? I'm gonna have to go there then. Where's he, where do you wanna go, producer Paul? Top right, oh! See now, wherever I go, you've won. Because if I go here, I can't believe I'm playing noughts and crosses with a chalk wheel, but I am. There he is, he's the winner. That's your chalk wheel. <laughs> the Primstick Chalk Wheel, CPP H39, limited stock on that, 545. And also you can obviously just brush your chalk away after it's not gonna leave a residue on your fabric. <laughs> I'm not sure it's made for noughts and crosses. It is made for marking up fabric, but why not have some fun in the process? I enjoyed it. <laughs> so you've also got a chalk option in a mouse, so just a different shape. Um, and also you've got a chalk indicator on here. So you have a little window in the front, um, a little sort of pearl droplet there where you can see how much chalk is left inside. Slightly different design, easier to hold in your hand. So you could, oh, that's a good idea. Who said that? Tim. So it's a combination. This is a combination of, of effort from upstairs. You could stitch your fabric onto a board and then you could use that to play noughts and crosses and because you can rub it off, it's a reusable noughts and crosses board. Good idea. So this is the chalk and um, mouse CPP H39. Again, that one's 545. The stock is limited on the stick. So if you do want to go for that one again, because you can just hold that like a pen and it's got that nice groove there. You can just, it's a really sort of comfy fit in between your fingers and really easy to use. Oh, we've had a message in. Who was that from? Let's have a look. So, oh, it's gone off my screen. Oh, here it is. Oh, da -da. It's gone onto the sewing call to Facebook page. Let me try again. Da -da -da. Okay. Uh, this is from George in Bedfordshire. Morning, George. Um, hi, Amy. Love the toys. Some of the, some of the denim print fabrics look like traditional Japanese sashiko. Yes, they do. Those stitch, those white stitches. Um, got some for a kimono project from George. Oh, that's, no, that's a fab idea. We had a, um, I think it was Jennifer Taylor that was doing sashiko. And it is that traditional um, Japanese, that white stitching. I think particularly the, uh, the pointel and that diamond arcuate one with those white stitches. It does look just like sashiko. Send us a picture of your kimono when you've made it, George. I'd love to see it. You can upload it to, um, to our Facebook page or email it to us. I always look at them, even if we don't get a chance to show them on the show. So thank you for that. 
So let's have a look what's coming up on tomorrow's show. I'm back in tomorrow morning and we've got the colours of nature. So at 8am, we've got Alice Caroline's Wonderland. Then at nine o'clock, Bobbing Along. <laughs> That's a good name, I like that one. Then at 10am, Alice Caroline's Wonderland part two. So we're carrying on with that. And at 11 a.m., Quilt As You Go is back. We've got some Quilt As You Go options, which are really popular here at Sewing Quarter, with all of those marks on your quilt for you. Perfect. Okay, so lots of tools in that hour. The most popular thing of the hour, is it the pincushion? Don't keep me in suspense, producer Paul. Is it? Da, 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 da. It's the pincushion, it is the pincushion. That was the most popular thing this morning. So I'm glad I, glad I asked to have that back in. One more time, let me just show you how this works. Those pins all on the table, you can just hoover them up really quickly or gobble them up as Amanda said. You just, you just aim that towards it and that strong magnet picking up all your pins for you. So if they're fiddly, if you're struggling with your eyesight, obviously the, the safety element of picking pins up straight from a table, you can just pop those straight off that magnet and hoover them all up in one go. Super speedy. XCPH79 445. The most popular product of the hour. You can aim those pins just towards it, drop them straight onto your magnet like this. It's just going to stick straight on or you can hoover them all up. Simple, straightforward, a time saver and just really easy, a really straightforward way of keeping all your pins in one place. Okay, so I've had a lovely morning this today. I've been joined by Amanda Wyatt. I'm wearing the blouse that she made at 10 o'clock. So if you've just tuned in, you want to see how we made that, you can go back on YouTube. All of our shows are on there. Follow the, um, the explanation that Amanda did for the darts. We also had a lovely uh, Visaline hour at eight o'clock this morning, looking at all different products that they have and some premier fabrics with our hot air balloons, our vintage florals and our violins. So I'm back in the morning with Alice Caroline. We've got a great show lined up. Really excited for that. It's my first Saturday actually at On Sewing Quarter, so that should be fun. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Get on with some sewing. Enjoy. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Follow us on Twitter for more inspiration, top tips, news, and share your own creations with us. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts.